to another online meeting of RBKC's licensing subcommittee. I'm Councillor Dori Schmetterling and I'll be chairing this meeting. It is being held via Microsoft Teams and it is also being streamed live. I'm accompanied, as you've noticed, by two other committee members, Councillor Malcolm Spaulding and Councillor Tom Bennett. Councillors, please introduce yourselves. Councillor Spaulding. Uh, I'm Councillor Malcolm Spaulding and I'm the Ward Councillor for Earls Court Ward. Thank you. Councillor Bennett. Councillor Tom Bennett, Ward Councillor for Redcliffe Ward. Thank you. Today we will be considering a review application requested by Environmental Health, who are a responsible authority in respect of a licensed premises called Ariadne's Nectar Bar, situate at 274 Latimer Road, W10 6Q, I think I kind of got the rest of the postcode here. I appreciate there are a number of parties who wish to participate in this meeting, and I'll run through the procedure shortly, as I am keen that we hear from all parties, including the applicant and Mr. Dimitrios Kotsakis, as well as any other interested party who has lodged a valid representation within the deadlines permitted by the Licensing Act. I also appreciate that there are passionate views on both sides, and there is the suggestion that the Council has some sort of plan to close Ariadne's nectar bar down. On the contrary, in the Council, we encourage businesses. And I wish to point out that the function of this committee is to consider the representations raised, both verbally and in writing, and to decide if these premises are undermining the licensing objectives, and if so, to take appropriate and proportionate steps to promote the licensing objectives. The papers relating to this review are publicly available, and I hope all parties have read them. We shall now deal with a few administrative matters. First is declarations of interest. I'd like to ask members to, de to state if they have any declarations of interest to make. For myself, I confirm that, that I have no declaration of interest to make regarding this item. Do the other members have any declarations to make? Councillor uh, Spalding. No, no, no interest, Chairman. Councillor Bennett. To yeah, nothing to declare, Chairman. Now we come to the election of a substitute chair because the quorum of this committee is two, as there is always the possibility that I may lose connection temporarily during the broadcast. I am nominating Councillor Spaulding to be appointed as the substitute chair. Members, please confirm whether this net nomination is seconded. Councillor Bennett. Yep, second that. Thank you very much. I confirm that Councillor Spaulding has been appointed substitute chair. Thank you. Now, come to more introductions. I would mention that we are joined remotely by Sharon Dybal and Paul Phelan from the Council's licensing team. Our legal advisor is Heidi Titkem. We are also accompanied by our committee officer, Isabel Saunders, who will be monitoring our connections and who will help with any technical issues we may have. Isabel Saunders is supported by Leonie Hill and Yasmin Jama. I understand that there are a number of parties attending the hearing today, and I would like them individually to introduce themselves now and confirm that they are participating in this hearing. Um, sorry, Ms. Saunders, shall I ask them now or shall I finish, go through that first before I ask them to identify themselves? Um, yes, we could put the attendance sheet up on screen and go through it in that order. Uh, if okay, you why don't we do that? Yes, thank you. So, uh, applicants for the review, uh, Fiona Johnson for the council, are you here? I am here, Chairman. I'm um, Fiona Johnson, licensing officer, and I've put in a representation on support of, um, on behalf of the licensing authority. Thank you. Uh, Ashley Wilson, on behalf of the planning department, council of the RBKC, are you here? Y yes, Chairman, present. Thank you very much, Ms. Wilson. Winston Labar from the Environment and Health Department. Mr. Labar, are you here? Yes, Winston Labar is here. I was the one who made the application for the review of the license. Thank you very much. Uh, Sarah Lefebvre 
who is a counsel on behalf of the Environmental Health Department. Are you here, Ms Lefebvre? Good morning, sir. Yes, I am here. Thank you. And finally, from the council, uh, Lindsay Le Mazurier, a solicitor. Are you here? Present, Chairman. Thanks very much. We now come to the uh, premises license holder, Mr. Dimitri Kotsakis of Ariadnes. Are you here? There you go. Yes, I'm here, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And um, Ms. Ariadne Kotsakis, are you here? Yeah, I'm also here. <laughs> Thank you. A witness for the um, premises license holder, Evelyn Davis. Yes, Thank I'm here. here. Yes, Evelyn Davis is here. Thank you. Uh, Henry Bickett, are you here? I believe at the commencement of the hearing, we didn't have Henry Bickett present, and I believe officers have uh, emailed him to to query whether he needs any help connecting or anything like that. Thank you very much. Uh, Nick Shirley? Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. And now we have um, objectors to the review. Um, Mr. Robert Larkins. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, Mr. Larkins. Thank you. Mr. Hugo Chariton, are you here? Uh, likewise, again, Chair, I believe we don't have Mr. Chariton present currently, but again, officers are chasing this. OK, we still have a few minutes before the formal hearing gets going anyway. Uh, Ms. Dawn Leonard. Are you here? Uh, Dawn is struggling to, to get online, but I think she's trying. Right. OK, well, we'll have to then check later on that if she's managed to get in. Um, amongst the officers of the council, we have Heidi Titcombe, Legal Services. Are you here? Uh, hello, Chair. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Technology is working. Uh, from the licensing department, Sharon Dyball. Good morning, sir. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paul Phelan from Licensing. Are you here? Uh, good morning, Chair. Present. Thank you. Oh, of course, Isabel Saunders from Governance Services. We know you're here. <laughs> we... And Yasmin Jama, are you here? Yes, I'm present, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Leonie Hill from Governance Services. Are you here? Present, Chair. Thanks. And finally, Mr. Martin Carver, or Governance. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm here. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. We'll check on the uh, missing ones. Mr. Bickett, Mr. Leonard and uh, Mr. Chariton later on. Chairman, uh, Councillor Bactier and Thaxter are also joining us, I believe. Oh, yes, that's correct. Uh, Councillor Bactier, are you here? Good morning, Chairman. Yes, here. Morning. OK, I'll just put you. Yes, that's right. I've got to put you down here. And uh, Councillor <laughs> Thaxter, are you here? Morning, Chair. I'm present, Chair. Thank you. Um, right. Turning to environmental health, I understand that you are represented by uh, the barrister, Ms. Sarah Lefebvre, and your solicitor, Lindsay Le Mazurier. Of course, both have signaled their presence. You will potentially be calling Mr. Winston the bar as a witness, who is accompanied by Fiona Johnson, who is a licensing enforcement officer. Um, we have now heard that they're all present, but could you please now introduce yourselves and say whether you wish to speak? So let's start with uh, Ms. Lefebvre. I guess it's obvious you want to speak, but please confirm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Chair. That is, that is literally my job. Um, I know, but uh, <laughs> formality, I suppose. Yes, absolutely. My intention, Chair, is uh, to make the application myself, take the full 10 minutes, but it, it may be either myself or Mr Labar who responds to the committee's questioning uh, that they may have of us. Fiona Johnson will speak for herself because, of course, she's made a separate representation to which I anticipate she'll want to speak in her own right. Right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Le, Le Mazurier. Thank you, Chairman. I'll leave this speaking to Council. Right. Um, Fiona Johnson. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I do wish to speak and I will be able to answer any questions that have put off me. Thank you very much. Let me just. Gosh, I've lost the screen. Bear with me. Mm. I, for some reason, I got out of the team screen and 
I can hear everything. I can see. There we are, back again. Right. Um, next, turning to the premises license holder, I understand that you, Mr. Mid Dimitrios Kotakis, are representing yourself today. Can you please confirm? This is a formality I have to ask. Can you please confirm you wish to speak during this hearing? Of course I do. Yes, please. Thank you. And Mr. Kotakis, can you please confirm whether you will be calling any witnesses and provide their names? I have done that already. Um, would you like to confirm this formally? I know it's 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 uh, just a formality. Yes. Uh, is this uh, lady Evelyn and uh, Nick uh, and Don and Hugo? Uh, Evelyn Davis. Evelyn Davis, Nick you, you have that all that. We well, submitted it already. Yes, I, I know, Mr. Kotakis, but for the this is a formal hearing, and it's also being broadcast. So we just have to go through some of these um, uh, these formalities, even if they seem obvious that you're going to speak. Like I had to ask um, Mr. Favorite to confirm she's speaking when it's obvious she's going to speak, but that's just part of the formalities. Um, so the I also understand. Will be Pardon? Evelyn Davis, Nick Shirley. Um, Dawn Leonard, if she comes on. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kotsakis, I understand you'd like to play a video when it gets to your turn for speaking, and I confirm that first facilities have put in place to allow for this. Okay. Saunders, is it correct that, your, uh, that the facility is available? Yes, Chair, it is. We might need a, a moment or two between switching between the PDF slides and the video, but we should be able to do that for you today. That's fine, no problem. Um, Chair, it's uh, Heidi Tickham here. Yes. I just wanted to clarify, because this was a change shortly before the hearing started, mm -hmm. whether Councillor Bakatar Bak is going to actually be speaking uh, along with um, oh, yes. Kosakis. Oh, yes. Thank you for uh, checking with that. Uh, Councillor Bakhtiar, will you be speaking as a witness for Mr Kotsakis? Uh, yes, Chairman. Thank you. And... Councillor Thaxter, will you speaking? Will you be speaking as a witness for Mr. Kotsakis? I will, Chair, if need be. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, we also have to ask um, planning. Uh, would a represent? Would uh, Ashley Wilson like to speak today? Yes, Chair. I might not need the ten minutes, but yes. Thank you. Yes, in fact, we will come to the times. We, I'm going to give a bit more. We'll come to that. I note that there are a number of local residents who oppose the review, and Mr. Robert Larkins and Hugo Cheriton, uh, who are attending the hearing when we get them in, um, and they wish to speak. I mean, we've had confirmation they wish to speak, but can I now check, is Mr. Cheriton in the meeting? No, he's not in the meeting currently, Chair. We are, uh, as I said, okay. trying to chase okay. up with him. So you'll let me know when, because when the two others get in. So I can't yeah, ask. But we, we do have Mr. Robert Larkins present. Right. Before we start hearing the case, there are a few ground rules. Um, please uh, make sure. Oh, keep your microphones on mute unless you are speaking. That prevents feedback and all the other sounds which we may not need to hear. And so keep your microphones on mute, off, uh, until you are invited to speak. And please make sure that your mobile phones are on silent. If you wish to put your cameras on when you speak, please feel free to do so. And indeed, keep your cameras on at any time if you wish to. Uh, unless we may have to ask to turn them off if, if we run into system overload and connection problems. Everyone should have received the procedure for this meeting regarding the use of cameras and how to connect back if you lose uh, connection. Thank you. The committee will be allowing all valid parties to question the opposing party after their submissions have been made and after the committee members have finished their questions. So please do rest assured that everyone who has asked to speak will be allowed to do so. For clarity, I will outline the procedure of this meeting. First, the licensing officer, Ms. Sharon Dyball, will give an outline of the application. 
Um, I have to ask this formally. Please confirm your attendance. Sharon Dybul. I, I am present, Chair. Um, yes. Mr. Phelan uh, will actually be doing the introduction for the licensing team. Uh, OK, fine. I'll just make a note of that. I will then ask the applicant's legal advisor, Ms. Sarah Lefebvre, to, submit her, to present her submission. You will have 15 minutes, up to 15 minutes to make your submission. And Mr. Labar will be able to present his evidence during this time. And I would like to, uh, this reminds me to say that all speakers will have up to, exceptionally, up to 15 minutes to make their submission. Normally it's 10, but here we are uh, allowing up to 15. I hope this is satisfactory. Anyway, after the legal advisor's, applicant's legal advisor's submissions, questions will be asked by members of the committee to the applicant. The premises license holder and the other two objectives will then be able to ask questions of environmental health for up to five minutes each. Next, Mr. Kotsakis will be able to present his submission for up to 15 minutes. And um, you will you will <clears throat> advise us, please, if you would like to present your video at the start of your submission or later on during it. Chair, sorry to interrupt. It's Heidi Tick. Um, uh, there's been a slight change because uh, Fiona Johnson is going to speak in her own right. Um, they would she would then go next and the members would then be able to ask her questions, uh, as can uh, Mr Kostakis and the other objectors. And then following Fiona Johnson will be um, Ashley Wilson from planning, who will go through the same pre procedure and members and the uh, Mr Kostakis and the objectors can ask them questions and then it will be uh, Mr Kostakis after that. turn. Okay. I just wanted right. to clarify that for you. Thank you. I've made a note on that here. Thank you. Anyway, after Mr. Kotsakis' uh, submission, questions will be asked of him by members of the committee. Ms. Lefebvre will be able to speak, will be able to ask Mr. Kotsakis any questions she may have up to five minutes. Next, Mr. Larkins and Mr. Chariton will be able to present their submissions for up to, in, up to 15 minutes each. And indeed, um, Evelyn Davis, sorry, Dawn Leonard will be able to speak then as well. And we, the questions uh, can be asked of them by members of the committee and Ms. Lefebvre for a maximum of five minutes. I will then ask Ms. Saunders if any issues have been raised. After this, we will ask our legal officer, Ms. Heidi Titcombe, to deal with any questions she may have, for example, regarding any conditions. Please be aware that there will be no summing up and the meeting will come to an end. We will not announce our decision today. It will be announced within five working days. The hearing will come to an end and the live broadcast will end. I should like to remind everyone that the committee has read the papers, so there is no need to repeat the content. But please do draw our attention to certain points and pages as you may wish, and Ms. Saunders, will move the document on the screen for us. There have been quite a few additional documents, so I will now ask Ms. Saunders to list the documents we should all have received. If anyone has not received these documents, can you please tell me now? Yes, Chair, thank you. Um, so to start with, we have the um, base report. Um, which is the, the main report summarising the application for the review and all the comments received from the interested parties. There was then a set of additional documents um, and there's a, a summary of what that contains. It's, there's a letter objecting to the review and in support of Ariadne's and then another one uh, from Mr Christos Maris and Mr George Rutledge and then um, a letter from the premises <coughs> license holder himself, Mr Dimitri Kotsakis, um, another letter of support from a local resident submitted by Mr Kutsakis, and then a number of letters of support for the premises uh, from a previous licensing case that have been submitted by the premises license holder, Mr Kutsakis. Um, then yesterday there were two sets of further additional documents sent out, one from Environmental Health, um, which will just come up on screen in a second. Um, um, 
and this is uh, the transcript of a PACE interview. And then there were some further letters of support from residents um, that came out yesterday, plus um, a couple of news articles um, that were submitted by um, Mr. Kutsakis um, about Ariadne's uh, from a local newspaper. And those are all the additional documents, Chair. Thank you. Uh, has anyone not received them? Can you tell me now, please? OK. Uh, now, regarding something about disruptive behaviour, I would like to say that I appreciate that there are passionate views on both sides. Please do not interrupt each other. All those who have asked to speak will be given an opportunity to do so. So please await your turn. Thank you and let's get going. But before we do, could I just ask you to hold 30 seconds while I turn the temperature in the room I'm in up? I'm not at home, but it's got rather cold. So bear with me one second. Thank you, many apologies for that. Ms. Dybal, can, uh, sorry, Mr. Phelan, can you please outline the application? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. This application for the review of a premises sorry. license. Sorry, one uh, one thing. Um, we we have received the, the submission of the environmentals uh, of yesterday. We haven't got that. So we don't know that. We're in uh, the darkness of that. Ms. Saunders, what... Um, uh, um, can, can I? Uh, it's Heidi Tickham here. Sure. Uh, so, so it's the statement that hasn't been received. Um, I suggest then, uh, when Miss Lavev um, goes through her evidence, that she goes through that document, and then you give um, Mr. Kostakis an opportunity to um, li liaise with his colleagues just in case he wants to discuss it. So you might need a 10 minute adjournment after that uh, and just confirm that that is acceptable to Mr Kostakis. Yes, and just to confirm, Chair, the email went out uh, to all parties, including Mr Kostakis, at five minutes past four yesterday. Um, so if that assists at all. Can you, yeah, check, can you check your email, Mr Kostakis, please? Yes. Uh, I have that, but I haven't got it. What is the subject line? So maybe Mr. Kataka can search for it, Ms. Saunders. How was it headed, the email? It was titled Ariadne's Licensing Hearing Dash Further Additionals. And it included um, the additionals submitted by Mr. Katsakis yesterday, along with environmental health additionals. So, so sorry, it's Heidi Tickin here. Just to be clear, Mr. Kostakis submitted a large quantity of documents, which is, was over a hundred pages, that he wanted to the the committee to consider and the other parties yesterday. Um, so, so we've got a, a large bundle of documents from um, the premises license holder. Mr. Kostakis, um, or your daughter, could you please check whether you have actually received this PACE interview um, amongst your papers? Uh, it may be appropriate for the members to have a five-minute adjournment to give Mr. Uh, Kosakis a time to just check that before we proceed further. I'm just checking now. We've got the letters with, we've got an email with the support letters that we'd sent, um, but we don't seem to have this interview or the environmental submission. Uh, is, okay. is this the email at five past four? Can I just check, Ms. Katsakis? 1605. Uh, yeah, 1605. So this one was at 1349. Can, no. can, I, can I suggest then that, that uh, Ms. Saunders resends that case statement 
and that uh, sends that now and we have a 15 minute break to give Mr Kostakis and his daughter an opportunity to read that document now and if they've got any concerns about it they can uh, confirm that when they come back after the 15 minute adjournment. Uh, well mate that sounds like a good idea but if perhaps I can suggest that Ms Saunders sends it and when the Kotsakis has confirmed they've received it that's when we would adjourn for 15 minutes to allow them to read it. How's that? Yeah. Okay great. Is yes, I just didn't want to break up Miss Lavev's um, submission because obviously um, she's entitled to present her case right. as well. So, well, shall we make sure they that the, the the Mr. Kotsakis receives the email? First? I mean, that's obviously the critical thing. So, if Miss Saunders could as could dispatch it, I'm and they just can doing confirm. That out there. Okay, thank you very much. No, no problem. Well, um, well, Mr. In the meantime, Mr. Titkin, well, do you suggest then we? So say again. At what point do you suggest we give time for them to read it? Well, well, I think you're, you, uh, he, Mr. Kostakis and his daughter have advised they have not received this document. Um, yes. Yeah, so we'll so, wait for them to confirm they have got it. Yes, and, and then, then I think we should have a fifteen-minute adjournment so that they can read it, um, and then presumably. Um, Mr. Kostakis will be happy to proceed uh, and for that document to be um, considered as evidence, along with the large bundle of documents that his side have produced. Uh, and then we can proceed to deal with um, the environmental case. Yes, no, fine. All I'm saying is that before we adjourn, let's make sure they've got it. That's all. That's uh, been sent now, Chair. So um, it's been dispatched it's been uh, within. Term confirm within the next minute or so that he's received yes. it. Assuming the electrons haven't been sent round to Mars and back, they should arrive shortly, but you know, depending on internet internet traffic. Um Mr or Ms. Um, Kutsakis, um, have you got it? We've got an email, yeah. yes. And uh, just check that it's got but, the right attachment. But it's an, we've got the interview now. Is that the right. environmental edition? Yes. Yes, that's okay. the one. Yeah, OK, we have that now. So may I suggest we uh, break for 50 minutes to give you a chance to read it? OK. And and. Uh, and uh, just to confirm, Chair, that when we resume, um, we hopefully will have Dawn Leonard uh, will have joined us as well. Indeed, and we're also missing Mr. Bickett. Are we not? Yes, but I don't believe officers have been able to get in contact with him as of yet. Okay, okay well, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, when we reconvene, a good point to check that we have our miss, you know, how many of our missing people we can get back, get into the meeting. Okay, so, well, it's now 10.35, so may I suggest we reconvene at 10.50? Do or we come back yeah. in or do we just stay here? And stay here, just okay. stay in. Okay. Yes, I mean, please mute, mute your microphone. Well, everybody mute their microphones, but just stay here. And we will then, you can see the notice has gone up already to say that it's being adjourned and at 10.50 we'll resume. Okay? okay. Thank you very much.
Hello, Dawn. Uh, we can oh. see you fine now. You're in the meeting. Okay. Um, I, I just, I'll just hear it. I won't be able to see anything. Is that right? Uh, no, but if you go on to YouTube and type in Kensington and Chelsea, um, the live stream is on our YouTube channel, so you can watch along as you're, um, as you're listening into the meeting. Um, but you'll have to mute your microphone on your mobile uh, because there'll be interference. So to do that, you just have to press on the keypad star six. Okay, star six. Oh, that, will, that will mute your microphone. And then to unmute, if you uh, are invited to speak, you just press the same star six and um, you'll be able to speak then. Okay, hang on. Uh, I'm just going to see if I YouTube and then what do I put in for you? At Kensington and Chelsea. Um, and you'll see our YouTube channel. Right, hang on a minute. Where's my YouTube? Here we go. On my laptop, um, YouTube, and then just type in Kensington and Chelsea, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Right, at the top, we're searching, yeah? Yeah. Kensington and Chelsea, right? Okay, press enter. Um, okay, it's, oh, licensing subcommittee 13th of August, which is today. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's the that's the video you want. So I press live now, yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Let's hope we get something. <laughs> uh, okay. All I see is this committee is being briefly adjourned. And oh, nice. okay, I think I think it on, but I should put my earphones in. Yeah. Yes, please. Just so there's okay. no. Live now, yeah? mm -hmm. Oh, yes. uh, it's all there's a bit of a delay, isn't there? Yes, just a tad. Uh, which was driving bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Now yeah, I'll just sit here and and um, okay, I, I can t I can switch off, can't I? My I phone. Just, oh. yeah, so you can you can mute if you just press star six. Now on my on my phone. On your mobile, yes. Okay, uh, star six. Okay, star six. Okay, perfect. Same. Sorry, I just did it wrong. So star six. There you go, you're muted now. So just click that again if you're invited to speak um, later on in the meeting.
Chair, it's now 10 to 11, and I can confirm we've got all councillors uh, <coughs> present. So if you'd like to speak. Thank you very much. Could we also check if Mr. Henry Bickett has joined us? I don't believe he has, Chair, but we do now have um, Miss Leonard. Oh, very good. Thank you. Chair, and Mr. Mr. Oh, that's very sorry who's speaking you're not coming through that was very distant hard to hear do we have dawn leonard is dawn leonard with us um could we ask is mr hugh chariton with us has he joined Sorry, Councillor Schmetterlin, it's Leonie Hill from Governance. Can I just remind uh, Ms. Leonard that to unmute your microphone, you need to oh, right. six, and then we may be able to hear you. Um, All right. Also, hands gone up uh, from a number starting with 230. That's Mr. Larkin, uh, Chair. Oh, good. Thank you. He's, I guess he's saying he's present. Could you lower your hand, please, uh, Mr. Larkins? We know you're here. Oh, thank you. OK, sorry. No, that's all right. No, we know you're here. <laughs> that's the main thing. Right. Um, if everyone else is present, uh, Ms. Saunders, I guess we can uh, pr proceed. Uh, Chair, it's Heidi Tickham here. I'm just going to check. Um, with the premises license holder that he's had a chance to read that document. Good and point. Yes, please do. The yep. hearing. Please. Thank you. Yes, I did uh, read the interview. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so that means, I guess, uh, Ms. Titkin, we may resume. Y yes, indeed. Thank you. Right, um, Ms. Saunders, would you like to put the take that off the screen? The uh, joint announcement. Thank you. And now for the um, applicant's case, Mr. Fevre, can you please explain why the review has been requested? And please do turn on your camera if you like. You have up to uh, fifteen minutes to do so. Thank you. Mr. Fevre, are you still muted? Ah. Yes, Chair, thank you very much. Um, uh, Chair, with your permission, I'm going to leave my camera off. Um, my signal is a little bit patchy now, and in my experience, Teams takes quite a lot of bandwidth for the video video connection. So with your permission, I'll, I'll stick to the microphone only for this stage okay. in the hope of getting through uninterrupted. Uh, Mr. Fevre, I'm. I've got to uh, um, issue. Nice. I've got to. I've got to apologise because I forgot to uh, allow Mr. Phelan to uh, that means, I guess, uh, Mr. Kim present the case. I think he's got to do so first, doesn't he? He has. I will remute myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apologies, Mr. Phelan. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application for the review of a premises license has been submitted by Mr. Winston Labar, Senior Environmental Health Officer on behalf of the Royal Borough's Noise and Nuisance Team, in respect of Ariadnes 274 Latimer Road, London W10 6QW. The premises known as Ariadnes has been the subject of two previous reviews, one on the 27th of April 2009 and one on the 13th of September 2018. 
Mr. Labar confirms that there have been numerous complaints of excessive noise from both loud, loud music and patrons of the premises since mid-2019. A total of seven breaches of the noise abatement notice have been witnessed by officers since it was served on the licensee back in September 2015. Mr. Labar confirms for the grounds for this review as a prevention of public nuisance. A full summary of Mr. Labar's grounds for the review can be found at Appendix B, pages 23 to 31. Two responsible authorities have submitted a representation in support of the review. Ms. Ashley Wilson, Principal Planning Enforcement Officer, and Ms. Fiona Johnson, Licensing Enforcement Officer. A summary of Ms. Wilson's representation can be found at pages two and three of the committee papers, with a copy of Ms. Wilson's full representation found at Appendix C at pages 81 to 82. A summary of Ms. Johnson's representation can be found at pages three and four of the committee papers, with Ms. Johnson's full representation found at Appendix D at pages 82 to 144. This licensing authority has received three representations in support of the review application. A summary of these representations can be found at pages four and five of the committee papers, with copies of the full representations found at Appendix E at pages 145 to 147. In addition, 27 representations have been received in support of the premises. A summary of these representations can be found at pages five and six of the committee papers, with copies of the full representation found at Appendix F at pages 148 to 196. I would like to clarify that the existing license attached at Appendix A includes those conditions imposed following the last license review in 2018. Although Mr. Kasakis verbally confirmed that an appeal had been lodged against the review decision, no summons or confirmation was received from the court, so the amended license was issued in August last year. The premises does not benefit from the regulation exemption for the live or recorded music between the hours of 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. So live and recorded music is restricted to the hours stated on the license, details of which can be found on page 10 of the report. All conditions related to live and recorded music are applicable. Um, there have been no temporary event notices since 2017, nor has the premises utilised any of the 12 non-standard timings currently permitted under their premises licence. That concludes the summary of this application. I'll leave it there for now, unless there is anything else I could be of help with at this stage. Uh, thank you very much. I think now we have the applicant's case. I think, uh, Ms. Lefebvre, over to you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, as I already indicated, I will leave my camera off and speak only with a microphone in the hope of being uh, relatively uninterrupted. Uh, Chair, I do represent the applicant for this review, a senior officer within uh, the noise and nuisance team of your environmental health department. This is now the third review uh, brought in a period of slightly over 10 years. The first brought by an environmental health officer, the middle by a ward councillor, and this time again by an environmental health officer. Just a word or two by way of introduction. It is, uh, Chair, wholly lawful for an officer, or in fact for any other person to bring review proceedings in respect of licensed premises. In fact, I would go a little further and say that an officer of a responsible authority who is in possession of relevant evidence of interference with one or more of the licensing objectives should, perhaps must uh, respond proportionately in order to resolve or seek to resolve those issues. This applicant officer, Mr. Labar, is uh, in possession of hard, relevant evidence of serious repeat and apparently, at least in the hands of this ownership and management team, unresolvable public nuisance. That's the material that you have in your agenda papers and your officer has helpfully indicated where in the papers you find uh, that or already. I'll turn to some aspects of it shortly. May I say too, clearly this is a premises of significant community importance. Nobody wants to see this community asset lost. It's an important asset. Indeed, happily, it's a protected asset. What presumably everybody wants to see is this asset being properly run with respect to and within its community. Now, this is an application that's supported by the licensing service, by a planning and by a number of immediately affected local residents. 
none of the previous enforcement action taken has had the requisite result. And just pausing there, the enforcement action has been varied. It's included that pair of review proceedings with the imposition of conditions and restrictions. It's included uh, the issue of a noise abatement notice back in September 2000. It included interview under caution with the possibility of criminal process ensuing. It's included the issue of fixed penalty notice. It's included action by the planning officer. And all of those actions, all of that enforcement action has failed to bring about the requisite result, which is the stopping of interference with the licensing objectives and persuading Mr. Katsakis to recognise and meet his legal obligations. Chair, Mr. Katsakis was expressly told by your predecessor committee in September 2018, so almost two years ago now, that he was effectively in the last chance saloon. One last opportunity uh, given to him then to show that he could manage these premises. For your reference, sir, uh, that is page 59 of our agenda papers and paragraph 101 on that page. Uh, uh, those are the minutes of that hearing. Despite that history, despite that clearest of instructions uh, and indications given to Mr Kotsakis two years ago, the same issues have continued. And so it is that of necessity, these premises have been returned to you by the Environmental Health Department almost two years after that last hearing to consider again the manner in which Mr Katsakis is choosing to go about the operation of this business. Now, I know, and you've already told me that the committee has read all the papers carefully. Uh, I'm not in the business of reading out that paper. Uh, all, I, all I intend to do is to touch on uh, certain aspects. Uh, and really, my theme is repetition. Uh, there's an extraordinary sense, I suggest, of Groundhog Day or deja vu, straight up repetition when one reads these papers. What do I mean by that? It's the same people, it's the same promises, it's the same issues, and it's the same failures to resolve those issues. The same people, uh, sir, in charge of running the venue, uh, Mr Katsakis, the designated premises supervisor for many years now, and the person with day-to-day -day control uh, over the venue for even longer. In the last chance saloon for two years, and it is perhaps of note that no alternative designated premises supervisor has been identified for your consideration in advance of this hearing. The same promises, uh, what previous committees have heard are promises are either that uh, the premises is or will comply with the conditions of its premises license. Uh, the analysis presented previously, and I anticipate today uh, on behalf of the venue, it is that this application and all its supporters, including all the responsible authorities involved, are part of some kind of vendetta or conspiracy pursued for, frankly, wholly mysterious reasons. Uh, that's what this committee and officers have been faced with previously and elsewhere. Frankly, it, it, it's nonsense. None of these officers, and I very much doubt the residents, have the time, energy, resource or interest in pursuing Mr Katsakis. What they do have a real interest in is securing uh, the non-interference uh, and the non-production of public nuisance. The same issues. The key issue for this review application is serious noise nuisance where the activity which gives rise to the nuisance, whether that's music, live or amplified within the venue, or generated by patrons outside the venue, is taking place in breach of the conditions and restrictions imposed by the licence. That is inexcusable uh, in any circumstance, but particularly so in the context of the previous enforcement action. You know, sir, that Mr Labar has provided seven evidenced instances 
of excessive noise nuisance emanating from this premises in a very short window of time. That's between September 2019 and January 2020. Evidence by officers attending the venue, experiencing themselves the outbreak of music, uh, the presence of patrons, uh, and experiencing the effect both of the music noise and the patron noise in the complainant's premises. And that uh, follows a period of complaints received between May and September 2019. Uh, to be clear, uh, the licence you've been referred to, starting at page 10 of our agenda papers, restricts live and recorded music to cease at 2200 hours, restricts, and this is page 17 of our papers, by condition 18, uh, the front, the use of the front forecourt, that to be clear uh, of patrons from 2200 hours, and by condition 13 at page 16, uh, a requirement that no music or amplified sound shall give rise to nuisance. Those are pretty standard sort of restrictions that multiple premises within this borough and across the country manage to comply with. May I take just two examples from Mr Labar's evidence uh, of instances where they have been frankly flouted uh, in the hands of Mr Katsakis. May I refer you please to page 25 of, of the papers uh, and to the instance of the 4th of October 2019. I think, uh, though Mr Katsakis's video that as I opened it uh, was undated or un and untimed, I think this is the uh, instance uh, where he has produced video footage. The officers arrive at the premises at 23.35 hours uh, and at midnight go to the premises. They find the front area of the premises outside quite full. That is hours after the front area should have been empty uh, and there should have been no noise. Uh, the second example I'll take you to please, page 30 of the papers, the 24th of January 2020, a report at 22.59 hours of loud music escape from the venue, Officers arriving at 23.44, experiencing loud music with bass, seeing 10 people outside at the front of the venue in the forecourt, uh, and hearing music noise consistent for 20 minutes. Uh, clear breaches of the licence, the permissions, the restrictions all of which are put in place expressly uh, to strike a balance. Thank you very much indeed. I'm actually coming to the end, but I do very much appreciate the warning. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, repeat instances of, of uh, flouting of, of the balance, the very balance that this committee, its predecessor committees, sought to strike between the interests of the community and the interests of the venue. May I say in passing uh, that it is utterly standard up and down the country, everywhere for noise officers to subjectively assess uh, the instance of nuisance uh, uh, and uh, the, the occurrence of nuisance, uh, there simply can be uh, no justification for conduct of this kind. And so it is that I say that there are in the hands of these same individuals operating these premises, the same failures to resolve the same issues. Might I, uh, for your note, sir, uh, refer you to page 43 and paragraph 24. Uh, those are the minutes of the 13th of September 2018 hearing, where you will see in summary form the issues that were presented to the committee are on that occasion. They are the same issues <laughs> that have been experienced uh, and evidenced by Mr Labar for your attention today. There was, on that occasion, the same reliance on largely identical letters of support, uh, many of which have been reproduced, the 2018 dated letters, in support of the premises today. The fresh uh, evidence in support uh, of the venue are largely identical, many of which written by people who live a very considerable distance away from the premises. 
But in any event, as your predecessor committee found in terms, the fact that some people living locally are not bothered by noise nuisance from a venue doesn't mean that others living in the immediate vicinity are not impacted. And you have very considerable hard evidence of the noise outbreak and the noise issues generated by the premises. The same absolute refusal to accept that anything in fact is wrong and the same analysis that for some unknown reason this is some kind of vendetta or conspiracy uh, against this venue. Uh, quite the reverse is true. Uh, the long and unhappy and unsuccessful enforcement history here speaks, sir, of tolerance forbearance and attempts to work with this premises and this designated premises supervisor. It's for that reason uh, that this applicant uh, has been driven to the conclusion uh, that uh, Mr Katsakis is either unwilling or unable to resolve these issues uh, of serious noise nuisance uh, and for that reason now does seek revocation of this premises license. I think I've brought myself in uh, perhaps a minute in advance of my 15 minutes, so I will uh, stop speaking now and we can answer any questions you have. I believe you're on mute, Chair. Thank you very much. Like I said before, in these Teams meetings, there seems to be no external indication that one is on mute. So thank you very much for the reminder. Um, yes, we now uh, will have questions from uh, the committee. Um, but first, I'd like I'd like to kick off with one question, which, in fact, Mr. Fevery, you have touched on in another way, which is, um, and this is a, a matter that has been raised by one or two of the um, supporters of the premise of the objective of the review is why um, do uh, the um, officers of whichever council not carry um, a device to actually measure the decibel level wherever they're standing or sitting? I mean, you did mention it's subjective, but is there no, uh, what is the legal basis for not having a formal measurement? So I think what I might do is ask Mr. Labar himself to answer that. Uh, there is no, the, 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 the legal position is that there is no particular decibel level, no magic decibel level below which or above which there is a statutory nuisance. And that's why it's um, commonplace, utterly typical, the normal for officers to assess the existence or absence of nuisance. Uh, subjective experience. Uh, so, so that is utterly, absolutely typical. Uh, of course, the noise recording equipment can be placed into uh, premises, uh, 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 into any premises, and, and officers carry noise meters it to support their uh, subjective assessment. But I will turn and I ask Mr. Lebon to, uh, to indicate and explain to the committee precisely how or what factors go into that assessment. Yes, Chair. My name is Winston Labar, Environmental Health Officer. Um, with regard to the nuisance, it's been long established in law that we do not need to use sound level meters in order to establish a noise nuisance. A noise nuisance. Um, with, to establish a nuisance, we have to look, in, look at five characteristics of the noise. A, the proximity. B, its frequency. Uh, C, whether there's a pitch or um, how can I say, uh, tonal quality to the noise, its loudness, and also whether the person who's experiencing the noise problem is a, a normal person, i.e. the man on the clap on in bus. Um, noise from, how can I say, loud parties or music, uh, as, long, as I said, it's long been established that you can witness it from the street or from the neighbor's premises or whatever. For instance, if a party is ongoing and the uh, officers arrive on the scene and uh, part the noise, the loud amplified music is 
several houses away and they can hear the noise as soon as they leave their vehicle and they're 50 yards away from the premises. I would suggest to you that there's no need to have a noise meter there because it's clear. If they can hear it 50 meters away, that means the noise is traveling a great deal of distance and it's causing a nuisance not to just neighboring premises, but premises further away. And I think those are the reasons why it's been established in law that noise meters are not necessary in order to establish uh, a statutory noise nuisance. Um, I don't know if you need any further clarification on that, sir. Thanks very much. Um, could I just ask a supplementary to that? Um, is it always two, at least two officers who are the witnesses? So I was thinking because people's hearing varies, obviously. Um, so that's why are there usually two officers or is it not necessary to have two? It's not if necessary to have two officers, but it is um, good evidence if you have different officers at different times who corroborate your evidence. For instance, in this case, we have several different officers going through the venue at different occasions and witnessing the same noise nuisance and coming to the same conclusion that a statutory nuisance exists in the, you know, in terms of how we uh, judge a statutory nuisance to be. And that would be evidence that would hold up in court. I should, you know, we be taking that the case to court. In, um, it's always also been established that when you do go to court, that the, the judges look favorable favorably on evidence that is prima facie, i.e., you know, in situ, there and then, rather than looking at noise meters or anything else in regard to things of this nature. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Spaulding, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, could I ask uh, Miss Lefebvre, uh, referred to um, these premises operating as a pub and um, of course, the council uh, does support these premises being a public house. Um, it, it does have a planning use as a public house. And I don't think there's any objection to the premises being a pub at all. Um, uh, can I refer, uh, my question refers to Appendix 1 to 8 uh, in the bundle on page 66 to 80. Now, m most of those supporters, Ms. Lefebvre, um, also iterate that they're quite happy to see a well-run pub on this site. Uh, and, of course, the council has supported them uh, in granting this as an asset of community value. So I don't think there's any question that the council wants to see a pub here. Uh, as do um, the people who are supporting the review of the license. Um, they all want to have a good community pub. Um, would you confirm that the essence of the problem is um, that the pub is not being run properly according to its license conditions and is therefore creating noise nuisance, uh, which is in breach of, of its conditions? So that, that is precisely the point, uh, and with apologies if I didn't make that sufficiently clear in making the application. Nobody wants to see uh, no pub on this site. Uh, it, it's positively supported generally by the council, by those residents who are supporting this review application. Uh, it's recognised that it's a venue. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's a permission to operate irresponsibly or in breach of uh, the, the, the licensing conditions. Uh, a properly run community asset premises respects its conditions and its community. So Hello. Well, I, I got that, Chairman. I mean, that was a sufficient okay. answer for me. Thank right. you. Uh, uh, Councillor. Um, Chair, can we just check whether. Um, uh, Miss Lavev is is connected because um, that uh, certainly broke up towards the end of what she was saying. That's what I was wondering whether it faded out uh, accidentally, as it unintentionally. Miss Lefevre, are you there? Are you unmuted? I am. Here. I Did you am come here to the end? I'm, I'm... Did you come to the end? 
Uh, I did come to the end. I I muted myself at the end. I've unmuted myself to respond to what I've just heard. Um, it may be uh, we have thunderstorms where I am at the moment. Um, it may be that what I ought to do is to call in using the telephone line to make absolutely sure that I, I don't interfere with the progress, the smooth progress of the hearing. But I can hear you. Uh, I just uh, want uh, just for clarity, Chairman. Um, I, I'm totally satisfied that my question was answered fully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Titcombe, you wanted to add something. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just for the record, it certainly broke off, so I, I didn't hear the end of what um, Ms. Lavev said, and I wonder if she could just repeat it. The last two so couple of sentences. Uh, if I can remember what I said in the last couple of sentences, but I think what I concluded with was a confirmation that Councillor Spaulding's uh, understanding of the nature of this application was precisely correct. This is not application designed to get rid of. It's an application designed to ensure that this important asset is properly run. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Titkin, do you think we should allow half a minute just to allow um, Mr. Favre to phone in rather than to rely on the sound of the uh, Teams uh, programme? Uh, um, thank you, Chair. Y yes, it may be an idea. Um, I'm not long. I'm not quite sure how long it will take. Uh, Ms. Saunders will be able to confirm, but I know that it can be a bit of a gap. Ms. Saunders. Uh, yes, I would imagine. Um, about you know a minute or so should do it if that's what Miss Lefebvre wants to do. Um, it's obviously up to her preference though. It's more not to inconvenience everybody else. I, I can hear everybody perfectly well and if you can hear me again then what I might do is, is just open the phone line at the same time. We don't need to adjourn at all and then if I need to start speaking into the phone instead uh, then I'll start doing that. But yes but please be aware that you must keep the phone microphone off, otherwise we'll get feedback. All noted, Chair. Or, or the other way around, I can't remember now, Which, or both, but establish the line, but I may, no, I think it's the loudspeaker, so when the sound comes out of the uh, telephone and it'll be coming out of the uh, program, out of Teams as well, I think that's when you get feedback. If I, but anyway, we can experiment, you can see, but one of those will have to be kept off, but do open the phone line. Have you got the phone number to call? I've got everything in front of me in anticipation of exactly this issue. <laughs> I'll okay, do it go away. on then. Have a go. We can we you know wait for 30 seconds or so uh, without adjournment just so you can connect. And will you let us know, Ms. Lefebvre, when you're ready, please? Ms. Lefebvre? We all see on screen chair when she joins on the phone um, in governance and we'll be able to confirm that she's joined. OK. Thanks. She's just coming through now. OK, great. Very good. We got you there. Uh, right, um, Mr. Favre, are you ready that we can carry on? Yes, fine with me. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Councillor Bennett, do you have any questions of Mr. Favre? <clears throat> uh, yes, one one question, Chair. Um, Ms. Lefebvre, um, 
Mr. Kotsakis contends in his submissions that the uh, main reason that uh, the neighbouring property has been bothered so much by the noise, including on on many of the um, many of the seven occasions you mentioned, is actually because the insulation between the two buildings is uh, insufficient. That when it was converted to a residence, proper insulation wasn't put in. Uh, and actually the music is at a sensible level um, and but just because of that lack of ins insulation it, it's proving proving bothersome to the neighbor what would you what would you say in response to that I think so I would start by uh, emphasizing the noise levels that the officers uh, and a range of officers, experience uh, as emanating from the venue even outside uh, any complainant's premises. So that's the starting point, is the level of noise outbreak that the premises are producing straight out into the street, regardless of how it's experienced by any neighbour and neighbouring premises. Uh, and the grant of a premises license to anybody is a privilege uh, and the duties that come with that privilege include ensuring per the conditions on the license that you don't create a noise nuisance to your immediate neighbours. Now the fact that uh, a premises may have been now some considerable time ago uh, and uh, the occupants of that venue not uniquely i might say because there are a number of uh, a number of residents who are seriously negatively impacted uh, but the fact that that uh, that, that particular resident uh, lives in a converted property and is experiencing a very high totally unacceptable noise outbreak doesn't change the nature of the obligations and duties on the uh, licensee. Uh, so those would be the general, the general framework of the of the points that I would make in response. Uh, there is, to be frank, no evidence at all uh, to support uh, Mr. Katsakis's assertion that it is entirely down to pure, pure poor insulation, uh, 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 particularly um, when when set aside, set against the noise levels that the officers experience on their repeat attendances at the vent. So that would be my uh, general response to that point, sir. Thank you very much. No, no further questions at this point, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Spaulding, is there any follow-up you wish to ask about? Uh, no more questions, Chairman. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move to uh, the objections to the review, and I'd like to say that at this point, we'll first ask Mr. Kotsakis if he has any questions of environmental health. That's Ms. Lefebvre. And then we'll ask um, the others, which Mr. Larkins, Mr. Charriton and Ms. Leonard if they can ask questions too. So let's begin with Mr. Kotsakis. Do you have any questions of, it, of, of uh, environmental health? Uh, objections. Uh, <clears throat> I have already raised the legal objections for the legitimacy of this review. And it's all in my submissions. Uh, briefly, I must... Uh, uh, confirm with you that the license that I'm operating under is the original one. The restrictions of 18 have been appealed and is pending in court on the 9th of September coming up. So, uh, this Chair, Chair, can I, sorry. It's uh, my... I didn't interrupt you. Why are you interrupting me? So, sorry, um, Mr. Kosakis. I just wanted to clarify the facts here. In yes, relation to too. in relation to the appeal, so that everybody who is present are aware of the yes. position. So the the review um, that was heard. I thought that was back, one of the questions. But back in 2018, oh. that there was a decision, and it's quite correct, as I understand from the court, that you attempted to lodge an appeal. I of, didn't I lodged it of that decision yeah. the only problem is that when you try and lodge an appeal 
whether it's you or whether the council tries to appeal, whoever appeals, they have to comply with the rules of the magistrate's court. And one of the rules is that you have to pay a fee. I did pay the fee and it's pending now on the 9th of September. I can show you the notice from the court. So we mustn't change the fact to shoot us and make up the rules as we go along. That's what? the jury system. So the, the case is up in court on the 9th of September, South London Magistrates. So I've got a notice here. So, well, uh, um, Mr. Kotakis, um, can I suggest that you send a copy of the notice to the council? Of course, of course. I can even probably show it to you now if I, if I have the time to go and look for it. It's for the 9th of September coming up in a few weeks. So it has been lodged and his, the fee has been paid. 400 pounds. So the license I'm under is the original one, let's say the pre-18 license. So that's well, one of the... Well, I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry myself. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Kostakis, because this is an important point. Yeah. Um, as we have contacted the uh, Westminster Magistrates Court, which would be the appropriate court yeah. for your appeal to be lodged, and they have advised us that your appeal has not been validated. Um, so in relation to the council, that appeal is null and void and cannot be resurrected. Council so therefore, if the appeal... I'm recording a few weeks. Uh, it, I, I think you got it all, the facts wrong, darling. This, I'm coming to court on the 9th for this matter, for the appeal. It's, the fee has been paid and it has been validated and it's coming up. Well, so Mr. I don't know Mr. 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 Kosakis, if, if an appeal had been issued, then you would have had to serve and the court would have had to serve a document on the council. Well, you have been said this appeal was launched last November. So this is not now. Uh, and you should have received all this then. Well, we we have not received, I can confirm this, we have not received any appeal. So in relation to the council's point of view, there is no valid appeal, but I would ask you to send me a copy of the document which you're referring to. But at the present time, we have not been served with an appeal. So there is no appeal pending. It is an appeal pending, we keep saying, and I don't know where you're getting your uh, notices from. Uh, this has been launched and I've told the council I've done it, through emails and all this. So, I don't know, you play now like the council here. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Um, uh, Kotsakis, yeah. I think we have to be a little careful here. Um, yeah. There seems to be a disagreement of, 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 about the uh, receipt of an appeal notice or not. Uh, we must not call, start making allegations. The best thing is, as, as Ms. Titkin and I've suggested, is please uh, send a copy of your, um, of, of the doc, of the appeal notice to us. That we can look at it and please also send us copies of the, you said you've had, the emails have been sent. If you send us note, copies of the notifications you send to the council, then uh, that will support your well, uh, contention. Uh, yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah, I should try to do that. This is going back in history because I said it's almost a year ago, but I did uh, notify the uh, uh, November. And, uh, yeah, okay. They should be in the know of that. But often the practice of the council is to play ignorant. And I think it's important that we do not, let's please not make any assumptions. Well, I uh, we only deal with the facts before us. If you say yeah. that you have sent documents and emails, please send copies. And we? please send a copy of the uh, of the um, uh, of the notification of the appeal. You also mentioned the South London Court. Uh, our lawyer, advi our legal advisor, Ms. Titcombe, spoke about uh, the Westminster Magistrates Court. Yeah. So we also have a different court, which may suggest I'm speculating now. I say so that it's a different case. Yeah. But when we see your documents, we can then oh. take them into consideration. How's that? Yes, uh, I agree with um, you. Uh, but thank you very I, much. I have been under this uh, uh, certainty that the, the launching of the appeal has suspended the decision of the previous meeting, uh, hearing. 
So, uh, the other matter, as I've already raised time and again, this hearing should be unlawful for the reasons the amendment of the Licensing Act of 2012 state. Repetitious, vexatious, and frivolous. And well, exactly what this is now. So, there is, uh, I wanted to, 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 a further question about the conversion of this property, who is the show? Uh, Mr. Kotsakis, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but the purpose of this moment is that you ask questions of Miss Lefebvre. You will be able to make your own presentation and your own uh, point of view later on when you get your 15 minutes. So yes. at this stage, could you please only ask questions of Miss Lefebvre? This is what I'm all trying to do. The question I was going to ask is to do with the insulation of the party wall and the involvement of the planners in the matter. Because this uh, premises uh, has been uh, designated as a pub since 1888. So the council decided to convert the A3. But was it legal, that's the question, for them to do so without complying with the planning regulations that expect the planning, the council, to test the insulation of the part, demolished party wall. Because this building, for your info, was completely demolished and rebuilt, extended, dug out. So they never did any of that. And so when this resident moved in, the property, he complains now of people going up and down the stairs, people laughing. This is through the wall. When I brought this up on the last hearing, uh, what's his name? Uh, McAfee had said, no, no, the problem comes from the patio. So, but now it, it transpires that it doesn't. So what is the legal position on that, please? Mr. Lefebvre? Mr. Lefebvre, you're on mute. Thank you. I'm off mute. Uh, uh, just trying to extract the question uh, from uh, from that speech. Uh, Mr. Mahaffey uh, on the previous occasion emphasised the noise from the outside area. That remains an issue and a real issue now. Uh, there is also the issue, a significant issue arising from all and recorded music. Uh, as I've already said in answer to one of the councillors' questions, there is frankly no evidence at all that the complainant's or one of the complainant's premises has been built in any way other than utterly compliant with uh, planning requirements and so on. And nothing uh, changes the duty of a licensee by with his or her licensing conditions. So far as the grant of planning permission and uh, the precise requirements of planning permission, I don't have the uh, detail, I don't have any information at all about uh, the nature of that residence premises. It may be that the planning officer uh, is better placed to answer questions of that type in due course. Uh, thank you, Mr. Favourite. Mr. Kotsakis, do you have any a question about any other aspect of what Ms. Lefebvre said in her presentation of the case. Yes, I mean, I was going to ask whether this type of evidence can be relied upon, like the confusion between audible and noise abatement. We happen to use a limiter up to 22 decibels inside the premises when we play amplified music, but if they are aware that these visits of last October were reported as amplified music, Bridges, and it wasn't. It was a jazz trio playing uh, a double bass, the piano and a violin. So that came from across the road, the theatre and some of the audience came. So it wasn't amplified and there were no people in the sport hall, but some people were outside waiting for taxis. So, uh, is this evidence reliable? Someone's hearing against this type of uh, little gadget that he can 
securely and safely measure the level of noise. Because audible is not, by law, an abatement. And this is how they use it, because they have hidden agendas. And I will later specify how and what. Also, I was going to ask her whether she is in agreement with Mr. Labar being the applicant, while he has, I have evidence that he acting, doubling up as an agent of my landlords, let alone the right next door neighbor. There is evidence for that I've been possession of. They could, were, we, could we raise that? Sorry, Mr. Kotakis, you please stick to the questions. Yeah. Just ask a question. I mean, as I said, you can present yeah, your, your case, your evidence uh, later, but please ask a question specifically yeah, and let's stick to that. To be the applicant, that's the question. Sorry, say the question again. I missed that. Just if say Mr. it again. Mr. Labar is fit to be the applicant of this review. Under these circumstances, I'm describing and I've already notified the legal team, the licensing team, the governance. This is what I'm objecting to. And I've written it and I notify you a lot and you carried on with this. This... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I mean, in short, what is the question if about what... Lombard fit to be the applicant. Okay, it's, it's, on the grounds of, what's the grounds you are questioning, we are asking the question. He's got vested interest. So on the grounds that he has a vested interest, that's the question. Yes. yes. Mr. Lefebvre, does Mr. Labar have a vested interest? Uh, Mr. Labar has no vested interest. He has duties and responsibilities in his capacity as a senior officer within the noise and nuisance team, in, in turn within the environmental health team of Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Those are his role <clears throat> responsibilities. I have no idea who the landlord is, and frankly, the identity of the landlord is utterly irrelevant to this application and to Mr. Labar's position. Uh, thank you. Mr. Kotsakis, uh, do yes. you have any other question yes. of the, yes. of the yes. environmental health case? The, the question was the reliability of the evidence produced by these visiting officers without okay. using any measurements, any but uh, using audible, reporting audible as an abatement, noise abatement, and nuisance. That's uh, well, I thought I thought that Mr. Favre had actually explained because I asked the question about measurement, and she said that. Um, in law, it's acceptable that if it's audible, it's acceptable. But nevertheless, Ms. Lefebvre, would you like to comment further on um, Mr. Kotsakis's question? Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Mr. Kotsakis asked about the relationship between noise abatement notices and this licensing regime. And of course, there is an overlap. Both regimes are designed to ensure that nuisance is not caused by one premises to its neighbours. Uh, the uh, noise abatement notice designed to, to avoid statutory nuisance, the licensing regime designed to ensure that the public, public nuisance doesn't occur. In both uh, regimes, it is absolutely standard practice to rely on the subjective assessment of extremely experienced noise, uh, noise officers. Mr. Labar has explained exactly how and what factors go into an assessment of that type. To be very clear, though, we are not dealing with questions of audibility and inaudibility here. What uh, a, a, a range of have found, uh, and this is all set out in Mr. Labar's uh, witness statement, what a range of, uh, of officers have noted is serious nuisance being generated by this premise. It's not just a question of audibility. We're not talking here about fine balances between just audible, whether this is acceptable, whether it's not acceptable. Absolutely not. What we're talking about here is um, uh, with the licensing objective. Uh, and I think just picking up on one other point that I think Mr. Kutsakis was talking about, uh, the, the difference uh, between uh, on occasion live music, on occasion uh, amplified music, 
when you turn uh, to remind yourself of the interview under caution that took place on the 7th of November 2019, you will see, sir, that the two instances that Mr Katsakis was asked about, September 2019, the 21st, amplified music, and then the 5th to the 6th of October 2019, the loud noise generated by uh, the for, by live music performers, who interestingly, uh, when Mr. Katsakis was asked why those performers were playing at about midnight, uh, the answer to that was because the musicians just happened to pick up their instruments and were, I think, trying them out. Um, uh, finally, I suppose, sir, it, it, uh, the assessment of evidence is a matter in this hearing as any hearing, and your politics. Uh, it's relevant, it's admissible, the weight you give it uh, is entirely a matter for you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I guess one more, uh, one, uh, I'll go back to you again, Mr. Kotsak, is, is there any other aspect of the case, of the presentation about which you have a question? Uh, yeah, does the lady know about uh, this other uh, notice we received from the environmentals to us now noise insulate our cool room at a cost, as I told them, of twelve thousand pounds, covering their failures of. I don't think I can help you with that, sir. Well, you should do because you it's know. A planning. I, I think it's a planning out, matter. I already put it out to you in, in my emails. This is a major question, an issue for me because I'm not allowed to use my cool room still now. And it's a pub. I have to have my kegs in a cool room. Otherwise, they'll go off and the beer is not cold enough. So this is a very big issue for someone like us, a pub, not be able to use the cool room, the condenser, the fridge. I have a, no a notice of that not to do it. Um, Mr. Kotsakis, she said, she, Ms. Lefebvre said she can't answer that. It's, it's not part of the... Um, remit here to answer that so i'm afraid we're going to have to leave it okay. as it is thank you very much now i'd like to go to the other objectors dawn leonard do you have any questions of um mr Favre? and just a reminder for miss leonard that she'll have to take herself off mute using star six Oh, now she's she left. She's speaking back in, Chair. Um, right. You could <clears throat> turn to Mr. Larkins first. Mr. Larkins is... Yes, uh, why not? Mr. Larkins, while we have Dawn Leonard trying to come back, Mr. Larkins, would you have any questions, please? For Ms. Lefebvre? Yes, for uh, her, the yes. presentation of the case. Well, it's um, rather interesting that she is unable to... Um, Ms. Lefebvre is unable to... Mm -hmm discuss matters of planning because they do impact very much on this um, this hearing. Um, I would also wonder whether someone who buys premises um, next door to a pub <coughs> would not expect there to be some noise from that pub. Um, and the other issue here is whether the complainant is vexatious. Um, it seems that she is the sole complainant. There are no other complainants who are um, about the noise. Sorry, uh, Mr. Mr. Larkins, can I just say again, you have your chance to present your case, so to speak, later. Here it is just questions. Please pose a question. I, I, I'm asking those questions of Mr. Lefebvre. Yes, um, but not stating a case, but just ask, a, obviously you may wish to give a bit of context to the question, obviously, but please remember, this is to ask a question, your chance to speak fully on this comes later. Um, well, uh, Councillor Bennett has also picked up on the same issue and it hasn't been satisfactorily answered by Ms Lefebvre, so there is a question mark over that part of the issue. Okay, is there any other aspect you wish to query, which you uh, raise a question about? Not from Mr. Ferriff, no. Thank you very much. Mr. Chariton, please ask, if you have any questions, please let us let, let us know. 
Mr. Charriton isn't in the meeting chair. Um, oh, he hasn't made it in. Okay. No. And we've not so, heard anything from officers that he's tried to get in contact with us. Right. Okay. Uh, it's because then it'd be difficult for him to speak later if he hasn't heard the hearing. So let's turn to Dawn Leonard. Are you available to speak now? She's not. Re we'll let you know when she's rejoined chair. Um, she's not rejoined. It may be that she could ask her questions at a later point. I appreciate that. We'll yeah. muddle but up she, the order of things. But Has she just been in, in, in the meeting for most of it, at least? Yes. I think what happened is she's tried to unmute herself. And as she's unmuted herself, she's accidentally hung up instead. Uh, OK. Right. I think given that we've now been sitting since 10 o'clock, I know we had brief breaks, but since 10 o'clock, I'd like to propose that we uh, take a, a couple Dawn Leonard's rejoined chair. Okay, well, let's come back. What I was going to say, Wentz, I would suggest that after Dawn Leonard's questions, we would adjourn for a 10-minute break so we can all stretch our legs and do what we need to do. Uh, Dawn Leonard, uh, welcome to back to the meeting. Do you have any questions of Ms Lefebvre? I hope you heard most of it or all of it. Hello. She's just left again, Chair. Perhaps an adjournment would be suitable so governance officers can contact Miss Leonard and find out what the issue is. Right. It's 11. Well, it's almost 11.50. So may I suggest we reconvene at 12? Ms. Saunders, is that OK? Yes, we'll put the notice upon screen. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, is that Dawn Leonard? Yes, it is. Hi, can sorry. I, yes, we can hear you. You're back in the meeting now. I think I'm so sorry. Hang up first. Um, I, I have no questions. Just to oh, let you know, I have no questions. Just, just to let you know, we're actually adjourned at the moment. Um, <laughs> we'll come back at 12. Um, and once we're back, um, you can let the chair know that you have no questions. I mean, I'll be able to speak a little later again. Is that right? Uh, yes, I believe so. But, but um, right now, um, it, it's just I know what you're saying is being taken into account because we're actually adjourned at the moment. So if okay. you just... Um, wait until 12 when we're back um, in the meeting. I, I don't suppose you can tell me how long this is going to last. Do you also break up for lunch? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, Leone? Hello? Sorry, sorry. Um, no, I can't tell you how long this will last, unfortunately, because um, we don't know that yet. But um, the chair, it's at the dis uh, chair's discretion to um, have breaks and adjournments. So, OK. Um, uh, all right. Uh, so you, don't, you might be going through lunch as well. I mean, between one and two. Um, yes, um, if the chair wishes. Yeah. OK. Got you. Just I, I will have to leave the meeting at two. So. OK, yeah, no. it's up to you if you leave or stay in the meeting. Um, uh, OK. So
I, I'll just have to tell them, will I, um, when they come back. Okay, never mind. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Mr. Charrington. You're you're in the the meeting now. Um, we can hear you all fine, so you can mute your microphone until the adjournment ends. Um, just to let everyone know, the adjournment will be slightly longer. Um. Okay. And you can turn your video off. Um, like just whilst we wait of course you can leave it on if you'd like as well uh, hmm. I can go okay um, so you'll see it in the you've done it
Hello? Hi. Hello. Hi, you're right. Is there anyone? Um, do you know when it's going to come back? Yeah, they're yeah, going to start. Now. We're having a break. Ah, uh, okay. Hey, Dem, you're right. Stay on, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll see you in a bit then. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you, Chair. I think we're, we're ready now. Right. Thank you very much, Ms. Saunders. I'm pleased to say that it took a little longer, but it looks like we've got at least one of the other objectors in. Uh, Dawn Leonard, are you actually back? May we hear you? Can, can you hear me? Yes. That's Dawn Leonard. Say yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Excellent. Dawn Thank you very much. Um, you heard uh, Ms. Lefebvre's presentation of the case, I understand. I have. And uh, please, uh, have you got any questions? Not at present. No, no questions. Okay, thank you very much. You can, of course, speak later, as you know, if you so wish. And yeah. now, yeah, and now, Mr. Ch Mr. Chariton, I believe you're also in the meeting now. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, Mr. Char uh, Mr. Charon, can you uh, please st confer, state whether you heard Ms. Lefebvre's presentation or not? No, I haven't. Okay. Now, have you read the environmental health uh, presentation, at least? Uh, no, from this morning. 
I just I, managed to connect. I just managed to connect. Uh, I didn't have any Wi-Fi. No, but have you received, have you seen the written uh, presentation? Because I was, I like to give you the opportunity to ask a question. Of course, you can't ask a question of Ms. Lefebvre of what she said, but perhaps you've read the environmental health case. If you have, then you are welcome to ask a question. Okay, well, you know, I'll get back to you in uh, in five minutes. I'll, I'll read it now. I'll find it and read it now. Um, okay. Can I do uh, this? We'll, <laughs> yes, well, what we'll have to do then is we'll ask the next person to... Um, to uh, make a statement and after that you may we may let you you know go back and ask the question of Ms Lefebvre of okay. the uh, environmental health case sure. okay sure sure okay okay now we call on Fiona Johnson of licensing enforcement to speak uh, thank you chairman good afternoon everyone um, my representation on behalf of the licensing authority can be found at page 83 of the committee bundle and I submitted this representation on the grounds of the prevention of public nuisance and also the prevention of crime and disorder. Um, while we're talking about my represent representation, could I just make one small amendment if that's possible? On page 85 on the bundle, paragraph 9, the last, the, the last sentence, the date should actually be the 3rd of June 2017. Let's just, let's just so, get there. Sorry. Ms. Saunders so, is just scrolling down. Let's just get there. Yeah. So it's page uh, 8. 33 so tens. Oh, so yeah. you do get tens. Okay. Yeah. So page 85, paragraph yeah. 9, and the last sentence. There's a reference to the 3rd of June 2018. Yes. That should actually be the 3rd of June 2017. My apologies. Hanging on. Yeah, so it's paragraph nine. I got it. It says you've got 33 tens since September the 4th, 2009 yeah. for events at the premises, with the last 10 being for community event on 3rd of... Oh, I see. So there were 33... Yeah. I don't... Uh, sorry, that doesn't... Oh, right. Sorry. Yes. There were yeah. 33 from then, and the last one was uh, 3rd of June... June 2017. 2017. And okay. not 18. That's my, my mistake. My apologies. Okay, no, it's okay. Thank you very much. But well, thank you for correcting that. Okay. Um, so going back to my representation, um, we have a premises which has held a license to sell alcohol for several years, and for definitely several years prior to when the local authority took over responsibility of alcohol licensing. However, this is the first time, as far as I can recall, that there's been a premises um, before the committee on three separate occasions for a review whilst under the same ownership and management. Now, there's always a there seems to be a regular pattern with this premises, Chairman. For instance, first you have a series of complaints regarding loud music, noise nuisance, especially from private parties, disorder, trading outside authorised hours, and then the licensees are reformed of the complaints and reminded to operate within the terms and permissions of the premises licence. Then we go through a period of receiving more complaints and allegations of trading outside hours and also noise complaints. Then you get a review submitted. Following the review, there's a period, a short period, where there's no complaints, no reports of incidents, and then we come to the committee hearing. And then we're inundated with numerous letters of, from individuals in support of the premises. And then it results in conditions either being added or modified to the premises license. And then the cycle begins again. Complaints, liaison with operators, review, a short period with no complaints or incidents, numerous letters of support, conditions being added. Chairman, for over 14 years now, there have been several instances of complaints being received relating to disturbance from late night parties. The first review was actually submitted by Sergeant Trevor Lewis on behalf of the Met Police. And in his review in 2009, he refers to incidents of police being called to the venue and um, often at times when the premises should have been closed. He also made a reference to um, an incident on the 14th of February in 2009 when um, police were called to the venue. And when they arrived at two o'clock, there were still people queuing for drinks two hours after the terminal hour for alcohol sales. 
And as you're aware, that first review resulted in additional conditions being added to the licence. Following the review application by Sergeant Lewis can be found at my appendix two to the report. I won't go for it now, but it's there should anyone need to look at it. Now, after the review hearing was, um, after the review hearing for that first review hearing, we received a complaint from a local resident on behalf of her elderly mother who said that basically she's regularly disturbed through late night parties, noise and nuisance from the premises. Now, I've checked the tens and it should be noted that other than the temporary event notice, which was submitted on the 25th of August or submitted for an event on the 25th of August 2006, the licensing authority has no records of any additional tens being submitted until the 4th of September 2009. And that was for an event on the 20th of September. Um, as I said before, the resident made reference to regular parties. Now, Chairman, if you can please turn to Appendix 3, which can be found on page 95. You will see that since September the 4th, the licensing authority has received 36 tens to provide licensable activities at the premises. And these are for the dates of 26 of May 2017. Sorry, so there's been 36 tens to provide licensable activities at the premises. And the date of the last 10 was for an event on the 3rd of June 2017. Up till present, the local authority has received no further 10 submissions. I've referred to my appendix three because if you turn to page 133, you will see a copy of a letter that I wrote to Mr. Kotsakis on the 20th of March 2018. Just checking that you're there. OK, 2018. Um, the letter details the allegations made by a local resident. And if you turn to page 137, you'll find a copy of a response to the allegations by Mr. Kotsakis. First, I would draw your attention to the tone and the dismissiveness of the allegations. Now, common words often used in response to complaints from Mr. Kotsakis are libelous, slanderous, defamatory, draconian. On the top of page 138, he says, we have tried to contain the volume of the music emanating outside the peace hours, but we don't play loud music during peace hours. And in brackets, he's put after 22.30, 30 p.m. On the bottom of page 138, he states, we do hold private parties, but never out of hours, unless we have obtained a late night license, and we will be lucky if we had free private functions per month. As I mentioned previously, the last event that a 10 was submitted for was the 3rd of June, 2017. You've also heard from Mr. Labar and Mr. Leverve about the numerous complaints of excessive noise from, and loud music um, from the premises since April stroke May 2019. And officers have witnessed seven breaches of a noise abatement notice. However, this does go further back than then, Chairman. Keep hating to keep moving you along, but I just wanted to point out certain things to you. But if you do turn to page, um, page 99, so starting at page 99, you find a list of complaints that have been received between the 29th of April 2011 and the 24th of June 2018. This is the period between when the first and second reviews were received. In seven years, there were 68 complaints. From the 3rd of June 2017, um, which is part of the complaints log, we received 19 complaints, but this is just from the 3rd of June 2017 to the 24th of June 2018. We've received 19 complaints relate, relating to loud music, and those complaints were received after 22.30. As I mentioned previously, Mr Kotsakis has said that no loud music is played after peace hours, 22.30. 17 of those complaints were received after 2300 hours, when music should have ceased at 2200 hours. You can also see from the complaints log that officers have visited on several occasions, for instance, at 3.10 in the morning on the 22nd of June 2017. At 2.44 hours 
on the 26th of November 2017 and that log is on page 122. There was a board outside at the time saying private party and officers reported that music could be heard in the street. Again, no 10 was submitted for that event. At 0040 hours on the 9th of December 2018, again, um, we received a complaint saying loud music, private party. On another occasion at five minutes to midnight on the 24th of February 2018, noise visited the premises, noise officers visited the premises and they reported that some music was audible at street level and there was a sign outside the premises again saying private function. On the 8th of April 2018, which is on page 130, the police actually attended the premises following a complaint and they were told private party. Again, no tens were received. When the former councillor Allison um, submitted the, the middle review, the second review, within that she referred to nine complaints that she had received during the period 25th of June to the 13th of September 2018. Sorry? Sorry? We have five minutes left. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that. I'm nearly finished. Um, she stated that these received at times when the premises should have ceased operating. And you'll find that the decision of that committee um, has been appended and can be and her remarks can be found on page six of the decision. Um, is this the worst managed premises in the borough? I can only summarise a few facts, Chairman. Mr Kotsakis can be somewhat dismissive of complaints as seen in correspondence before us today and what he has said during his questioning um, and indeed in his email of 12th of April. Um, on one occasion, which is contained in the committee log, um, officers visited on the 9th of December 2017 at 2350. 23 um, that can be found at page 123 and it's complaint number 44. Officers approached him at the time about the loud music. However, shortly afterwards, a few days later, he contacts the noise service to say that known loud music was emanating from the premises on that day. Um, despite comments, there is more than one complainant. Um, those that are affected by the operation of this premises um, are scared of coming forward for fear of reprisal. At times, there's also been a lack of respect for authority by Mr Kotsakis, and I've made reference to this in my Appendix 6, where there's an occasion where I visited the premises with the fire officer, and also the police visit, which took place on the 8th of April 2018. Um, there's private parties and music being played, played at times when the premises should have received should have ceased operating um, the premises on its third review and the complaints and the issues remain the same throughout the years despite two previous reviews when officers visit the premises and this is contained in my complaint log um, they often report that he's inebriated whilst in charge of the premises and as we've heard today officers often witness loud music emanating from the premises and a lack of external management of customers during operation and at, at dispersal, sorry. Um, we're dismayed that even despite the previous review that these complaints continue, patrons shouting loud music, um, staff and management not moving customers on during, disturb, during dispersal and the premises operating outside of its authorised hours. We're also concerned about the consumption of alcohol within the premises, which are often at times when the premises should have ceased operating. We believe that Mr Kotsakis has operated and continues to operate this premises in such a manner that is in blatant disregard of the licensing objectives. Most operators would ensure that after an initial review application that they do their best to make sure that they comply with the licensing objectives and the terms and the permissions of their license. This is not the case. The premises surrounded by residential dwellings and on the basis, on the basis of the increasing amount of complaints the level of disturbances still being experienced by residents and the continual disregard for the terms of his premises license, we ask that the premises license is revoked. Thank you. Chair, I think you're on mute. 
Yes, thank you so much. Right, we come now to questions. Uh, as, before we start, I'd just like to ask, presumably that witnesses for Mr. Kotsakis, when, he, when his turn comes to speak, cannot actually ask any questions, can they, or can they? S sorry, check. Ms. Titcombe, you disappeared. Y sorry, Chair, could you repeat the question? I didn't hear it. Yes. First, of course, we'll ask the count fellow councillors to ask questions. But when we get to the next one, which will be Mr. Kotsakis, uh, can any of his witnesses join in the questioning? In, in terms of who can ask questions, it's all the people who've lodged valid representations. So that's obviously Mr. Kosakis and um, the other three um, objectors of the review, if they wish to do so. So that would be the uh, Mr. Charita, um Miss Leonard and um, Mr. Larkin. Right. OK, so. Right. So then any witnesses can then speak when Mr. as part of Mr. Kotsakis's presentation. That's okay, correct. Doke. All right. Sorry. Uh, counts, uh, fellow councillors, do you have, let's start with Councillor Bennett. Do you have a question of uh, Ms. Johnson? No questions, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Spaulding. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, one quick question uh, and to um, Ms. Johnson. Um, on page 87, um, the bullet points at the top of the page, uh, can I just clarify, um, loud music emanating from the premises, um, that presumably that is after 2200, after 10 o'clock at night? It has been, um, uh, sorry, complaints before 10 o'clock and also after 10 o'clock. Uh, so all music should have ceased at 10 o'clock. Second yes, question, um, staff and owner not moving customers on during dispersal. Is that the outside seating area again, which should be cleared at 10 o'clock? Um, it's a matter, it's a bit of both, sir. Um, it's the forecourt and also the pavement itself. Um, there have been quite a few um, occasions, especially in my report, where officers have visited and they've seen people congregating on the pavement outside the premises as well, not being dispersed on. And also the complaints received as well um, allege that people aren't being moved on. Two more quick questions. Uh, the last bullet point, premises operating outside authorised hours, does that mean that alcohol is either being consumed or sold um, after midnight? Well, the licensable activity for alcohol is the sale by retail of alcohol. Um, when officers have actually visited the premises, on occasions it has been after midnight. Um, people have been drinking um, and are drinking when officers arrive, but they haven't witnessed any sales of alcohol. And then the final question, um, I believe since 2017, there have been no applications for TENS. Uh, temporary event notices for private parties, uh, but uh, there is lots of evidence that since the 2017, in fact, lots of private parties have taken place. That's right, sir. Um, there's usually a board outside indicating that there's a private party taking place, or the residents report that there's a private party taking place, and also when officers have visited, um, they're informed that a private party is taking place. So just in summary, all four of those points, each one of them in itself is an absolute breach of the licensing conditions for these premises. Yes, sir. OK, thank you. <clears throat> right, uh, I think that's that. Uh, that's all the questions. So. Um, Mr. Kotsakis, it's your turn to ask questions of uh, Fiona Johnson. Oh, yeah. Please, Please remember to stick to questions of the subject. Your own presentation comes later. Yes, but uh, <clears throat> in that statement, there's a quite a few inaccuracies and uh, false allegations, lies, 
to quantitative presentations of facts. So going back to the 09 uh, review, uh, Mr. Lewis, the then uh, sergeant, licensing sergeant, had falsely stated and he was corrected twice. Uh, for the incident, the lady spoke about two o'clock in the morning, the police was called. There was no police call. And uh, the, the people uh, behind the bar, were they buying drinks or they were getting water and people outside, were they waiting for taxis? So uh, this is going back to the 209, which is like re regurgitated falsely again. So then... So what's the question, Mr. Mr. Um, it, what's the question? The question is, was the police call that day? It says at two o'clock. Because there was no police call here ever. So, and the other time the police was called, talking about the police now, does he know that the police came here for an alleged fight and then the three police vehicles turned up, one a van, because the next door neighbor called for a fight. So there was no fight. The other, does he know whether I need a tent to to hold the private party if it's within the licensing hours. She's supposed to be a licensing officer. I don't need the 10, I don't think, to hold the private party if it's within the licensing hours. Right. May I let Ms. M Ms. M Lefebvre, uh, sorry, let Ms. Johnson answer these questions. Yes, that is indeed correct. If you are operating within your licensed hours, you don't need a 10. However, I can only refer to the times that the complaints are received. You're referring to a sign up by the pub. You've asked me a question, Mr. Kotsakis, if I could answer. Um, you said um, the complaints refer to times when the premises should have ceased. You've also got officers visiting the premises when the premises should have ceased, ceased operating, and um, being told that either private party is taking place or there's a sign outside that a private party is taking place. You've mentioned in correspondence to me that you won't seek a 10, well, you don't have private parties, if you have got a 10 after hours, or if you have got a private party after hours, you apply for a 10, but we've had no record of any 10s being submitted since 2017. Well, this is because I didn't uh, operate after the hours, but I was referring to the question of the police being called, that you needed. Uh, so if you know first can if the there was this police coming to set at two o'clock, and that was back in the day. And then on eighteen, on twenty eighteen, when the police did turn up, and there was uh, they were they laughed and fled, went because there was no fight. So and uh, there has never been a fight here. So this is the slander I was talking about because in in the Allison's allegations, uh, in the last review, you you, re you remember were you involved? about these uh, objectives all being, uh, how you say, ignored by us, talking about children, that are dangerous to children. You remember any of that, about fights? You're all piled up on the path. You, re you are aware of what went on in that cheering and the slander that went on. And it was dismissed, obviously. You, you are aware of any of that. Well, all I can go by, I wasn't party to the hearing. All I can go by is what was written in the initial review application, which is part of my documentation. Um, yeah, I believe the decision of the committee talks about certain aspects of what was discussed at the committee hearing. And that's both for the review in 2009 and also 2018. Unfortunately, I wasn't party to those, so I can only go by what was reported in the so, review applications and the decisions. So is the application, the Bible then, what it says on the application, you take it for a fact and for reality? Is that how you see it? Whatever well, the applicant says is true. Is that how you see it? Well, that's to the best of the applicant's knowledge. I can only report by what they've said in the application. Yeah, but this application was tried in the hearing. You remember? It wasn't just the application, there was a hearing and it was decided upon the application. So all these allegations, I will remind you, were dismissed. And that's why I call it slanderous, which they were. So you, you take the application as a fact. Whatever someone writes on the application is a fact. 
the application, but also the decision of the licensing committee as well. And I'm sure there's mention, it's actually flicking on the page right now. There's mention and questioning about the private parties and what occurred. And as I said before, I can only go by what was reported in a decision and what the application said. Um, yeah. Mr. Kotakis, I, I think you had a chance to, uh, I mean, before this hearing, you, you have seen these, you saw the decision and everything. Yeah. So if you had felt that there was inaccuracies of any aspect, would you not have had a chance to uh, provide evidence to the contrary? We did provide the evidence, as I said to you, in the previous hearings, it's been tried and decided upon 09 and 18. And there was a lot of false slanderous allegations at the time. So the, but the, the lady takes the application as a fact. And well, Mr. Kotakis, I just say that, I mean, uh, all of us can, all of us who are not personal witnesses to any event have to take what is written as a record of events. So if I see something written down, never mind about this uh, in, uh, case or any other, if I get the report and I look at it, and I think there's some inaccurate statements within that report. I would then try to find the evidence. I would provide evidence and say, look, you've made a mistake in your report. But it seems that there was. this is the result, I think, of the 2018 review, this document that's up on screen. Is that correct, Ms. Johnson? I think the one on screen at the moment is... 2009. 2009. Maybe someone can correct me. I haven't. Uh, could I mean, yeah. Well, whatever it is, uh, at the time, once this is issued, this is a public document. So I don't know whether if you fe felt that there were inaccurate statements in the in that um, decision, then I suppose you could have written in with written um, evidence to say it's inaccurate and uh, please correct it. But it seems uh, that nothing like that happened. And yeah, just yeah, to make statements, sorry, allegations. Are not enough. You've got to provide a statement like the police didn't come and so on. And we did. And this was, you don't expect me, I, just one of me, and I don't know how many of the licensing team and everybody else are. So I cannot keep the, the records of the 209 and 218 handy on me. But this allegation was dismissed by the decision. So it, I don't need to bring in fresh evidence for the old hearing of old 9 and 18. We're doing a fresh one. So yes. the lady is using inaccurate, inaccurate allegations again now. And this is what I, I was asking her, if she knows that this police call and all that was a fact. Or she takes the application, what the applicant wrote, as a fact. Well, we have to take it as fact, uh, like anything that's written down. We have no uh, way, any other way, unless we prov we are actually given proper evidence that adds to what's yeah. written or subtracts what's written. We can only yeah. take by what's written. So, so what, to to do, what question do you have? So what was your question again of, of Ms. Johnson? My question is whether she knows that, for instance, Mr. Lewis, the, the sergeant, had retracted his statement that the police was called in a, that incident he referred to back in the day, ten, more than 10 years ago, because he did eventually retract it because the police was not called. So she's using this allegation again, regurgitating, and it was false. She, at the hearing on 209, she retracted it because the hearing, well, there was no record for the police being called. So this is why I'm asking her now. She's using this application, what so, is in the application, as a fact. And it's not, it's false. So you're saying that the police were not called on no. that date where it's claimed here in February 2009. Yep. Sorry, oh, around there. Um, sorry, tw uh, August 2008. Yeah. There's several no. calls. Okay, there's the 6th of April 2008, 24th of August 2008, and... The, I'm talking about the police. Again, in February 2009, the police were called. Are you saying they were not called on any of these, or what? No, the police, I didn't say that. When the police was called, it was 18, the 29th of April, and I went outside the pub. It was a private party, but they came at about 10 o'clock. Okay. Someone told them, as they told me, that there was a fight. At the time, I had 
requested the Freedom of Information Act from both the council and the police through the MP and that, and I had no response to it. Uh -huh. Like, who called the police? Falsely, wasting their time saying it's a fight. Because I see. I think the question Could is we... generally about the evidence that's just been presented as evidence because yes. these, these claims were already discussed and dismissed in the last hearing and the one before it. So using the things that have already been discussed and taken off the table seems to be repetition. Yeah. Okay. So I think chair, we, we, we chair, can't... Chair, can I just... Uh, yeah, sorry, we're not going to go just... further with this. Yes, go chair, on. Chair, can I just... Um, comment i know there's basically a dispute as to whether what the facts were which yes. obviously the committee can take that into ac account i was just reading that paragraph uh below number three which is on the screen and it says that both miss mitchell and mr kosakis acknowledged that the three incidents had indeed occurred and the committee accepted the evidence submitted by the police so, um, I mean, that was that that decision was written at the time when, when that review had occurred back in 2009. Um, I, I doubt that that would have been included in the decision had um, Mr. Kosakis disputed it at that occasion. Of course I did. Chair, 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 can I um, just add something because it might clear up? Um, an issue. I think that paragraph. Please go ahead. Which, yes. Thank you, Chair. That paragraph, which um, is taken read out, refers to the three points above, and point one and two involves. This is all evidence from the police. Uh, involves them attending, and then point three says police were advised by the victim that while he was at the premises, he was bitten on the yes. cheek. So it doesn't actually uh, say they necessarily attended. So I think um, uh, so the person reported the incident to police, but that doesn't necessarily mean they were there at the time. I think that might be the confusion. Thank you very much. Good point. Um, can I now move this on a little bit and say, to Mr. Kotsakis, we are, uh, of course, focused on the period after the 2018 review, although we evidence has been brought up of you know, information of earlier, um, we are focusing on what happened after that because the purpose of the review, if I remember correctly, was to ensure a sort of a, a, a operation in, in accordance with the promotion of the licensing objectives. Yep. All right. And so that's why, you know, it is obviously important that we focus on the, the present, so to speak. That's from 2008, September 2018 onwards. So, um, if you've got any questions to Ms. Johnson on this aspect, because she's presented evidence uh, also for this current period, late, this latest period. Yes, whether she, she knows that, the, for instance, the people that are outside are on the pavement waiting taxis, or they're just uh, using uh, drinking outside or something, uh, like violating me violating the license. Uh, and or serving after hours if there's any confirmation after that, because this is what psychophantically is alleged now that I carry on serving outside the, the licensed hour. And the people sure. outside, whether they're waiting for taxis and uh, who else is complaining behind the 276? If she, if she, because she says there's other people. Uh, Ms. Johnson, do you, do you, let's just keep to the question. Let's uh, make it short so each question short so it's easy to answer. Um, Ms. Johnson, uh, yeah. Okay, Any I'll comments? try to answer. Ms. Kotsakis, if I don't remember everything, just point me or repeat the question and I'll respond. Um, so, the when officers visit, um, there have been occasions when they've said that there's been people on the pavement. I don't know if they're waiting for taxis or not. They've just reported people standing on the pavement. There's also been reports of people on the forecourt after hours. And I believe there was also a licensing visit when officers visited and there were people drinking whilst on the forecourt after hours. So it's a mixture of all three, um, people on the pavement outside, people drinking on the forecourt and people standing or sitting on the forecourt after hours as well. Um, you asked a question about complainants. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to give details of complainants. However, I can confirm that there are more than one complainant. 
if you have a look at the complaints log that I've put as part of my representation, you'll see that I've given them letters A to E, and there's also one anonymous. Um, I haven't counted the anonymous one because I'm not sure if the anonymous one is one of the individuals given the, initial, given the letters A to E. Okay, does that answer your question? Uh, well, not quite, because you, you did not tell me uh, the day that people were drinking in the forecourt after hours. Okay. When was that? Can I just refer to my paperwork and maybe a second? Yeah. Okay, if we can turn to page 129. Actually, if we go to page 128, sorry. So that's page 128 of the committee agenda. And if we look at number 62, it says visit carried out by noise officers at 2222. Further down, so on page 129. Sorry, if you could just scroll down to... Yeah. 129 you'll see that there's a visit carried out by licensing and police officers at 23 45 hours and what the officers reported in their notes is that mr potsakis was present and the officers reported him for offenses under the licensing act 2003 in relation to allowing customers to drink on forecourt and customers sitting on forecourt during visit the matter was investigated and no further action taken Sorry, could you repeat the date, please? Is that 18? Yeah, that's the 8th of April, 2018. The 8th of April, 2018, and the police came here and uh, made the report. Wow. It was license, licensing officer. Sorry, it was the 7th oh. of April, 2018. Yeah. My mistake. 7th oh. of April, 2018, at 23.45 hours, and it was a visit by licensing and police officers. And police? Is yeah, that what I that's what it says. Well, it says wrongly because there was no police involved. Sorry? It, it, it says wrongly because there was no police involved. Okay, I can only go by the facts which yeah. I took off our computer database and it fact. said visit carried out by licensing and police officers. There was no police involved at all. Okay, I stand yeah. by the report of the officers. Obviously, your, these officers report wrongly, as uh, with the uh, uh, last year's October uh, report about uh, amplified music. And it wasn't amplified music, so their reports are unreliable. I can only stand by what my colleagues have written. Um, they said licensing officers and police officers. Well, there wasn't police. Officers, and if you have a look the police that attended, please bring it on. Well, Mr. Kotsakis and Ms. Johnson, I think this is a this is a difference of, of view here, and um, I'm not sure that we get much mileage out of uh, discussing the point any further, okay. um, unless we have legal advice, Ms. Titcombe. Um, thank you, Chair. No, there, there obviously there is a dispute regarding the evidence. I would just refer you to page 130 of the committee report. Um, the top of page 130. I don't know if that can be brought up on the screen. Thank you. Um, and if you see it the, in the right hand column, there's a CAD number. That is a that is a reference to a police number. So um, the police um, carried out a visit on the 8th of April uh, and they have included a number. Um, I can't say whether they um, visited on the 7th of April, um, but there was clearly police there on the 8th of April. Um, can I just add that those are two different visits? Um, if I remember correctly, in looking at the log, <laughs> Noise had visited <clears throat> that evening um, and licensing with police officers did visit on later that evening and the visit carried out by 
on the 8th of April by police office officers was completely different. They attended the premises following a complaint they received. But on the 7th of April, when licensing officers visited, they were accompanied by police officers. Chair, you're on mute. Thanks for once. <laughs> it's the wrong way around, the other way around. Uh, I was just going to say that um, we've, so we've got the, these these pieces of evidence here, but could we actually focus on the post September 2018 events? I mean, it looks here like there is evidence the police did visit in April of 2018. I don't know, Mr. Kotsakis, you can see that appears to be evidence that there is a police number, visit number, report number. But can we now focus on the post-2018 situation? And Mr. Kotsakis, are there any other questions you have on that? Then, Otherwise, if not, we can then move on to yeah. the other objectors who might want to ask questions. Sorry? Yeah, we can move on, yeah. Okay. So could I call on... Um, Mr. Larkins, if you'd like to ask a question of Ms. Johnson. Yes, indeed, Ms. Johnson. Um, your um, comment about the complainants being listed from A to E. Um, I, I was only looking at the, um, the document as it was being scanned on the screen. And as far as I could see, the, the complainants who seem to regularly feature were A, E and D. Um, there's also the question of anonymous mm -hmm. complaints. Um, now, in, in most criminal cases, uh, anonymous evidence is rarely accepted. And it seems rather bizarre that you accept anonymous complaints um, regarding noise. Um, sir, anyone can make a complaint um, they don't have to divulge their details. Um, some of the residents that I have spoken to have asked that their details are not divulged for fear of reprisals or retaliation by both the operators mm. and customers of the premises. But there's nothing in law to state that a complainant has to give their details. That in itself sounds um, quite derogatory. Um, that, that you're suggesting that the um, the licensee would resort to um, taking reprisals. I can only report what's been reported to me, sir. Sorry. Um, yes, but but then they're anonymous, so therefore, you know, how much can be attached to it? Um, my second point is that the um, descriptions of violence seem to refer and, and disorder seem to refer to 2009. So can we um, draw the conclusion that since 2009 there has been less um, violence and less disorder? I cannot, sir, no. Um, yes, I have provided details of 2009 where they were alleged incidents of, you know, violence and disorder. However, there have also been complaints of violence and disorder, and I say complaints, um, in 2018 and almost certainly in 2019 as well. Um, the, the, my other point is, um, given, I, I've lived in North Kensington for some 48 years, and I have lived um, between probably four public houses and so I'm well aware of the um, the crossfire from people returning from the pub and the um, attendant nuisance that's associated with public houses. Um, so my question would be um, what would be the the norm for North Kensington? I, you know the, the, the whole business of people leaving pubs and waiting for taxis and saying goodbye would appear to be very much the norm for any pub in the area. That is indeed true. I mean, you have a premises, um, the premises will operate, 
um, people will make noise. When we go and do visits and when we engage with licensees, we try to get the licensees to engage as much as possible with patrons when they're leaving the premises, um, providing the presence. If there's a group of patrons congregating outside, just reminding them that they're in a residential neighbourhood and to keep the noise down. And we've seen time and time and time again over the years where there's been complaints about disorder or noise or nuisance outside the premises. Officers have attended and have reported back that, you know, there's a lack of external management. Um, but my point is, how different is that to other licensed premises in North Kensington or indeed the whole of the borough? It's no different. We expect that of all premises. So, Every so, premises that has a license has a duty to operate. You know, you've got a license. Um, it's not a right to have a license. You've been given a privilege to operate. Um, and then you've got the four licensing objectives that you really do need to promote at all times. Protection of children from harm public safety and the main ones to today that we're discussing is the prevention of public nuisance and the prevention of crime and disorder. I, I do fully understand the conditions of a licence because I've held three of them um, in in London and, and Brighton, in Chelsea and um, North Kensington and Brighton. So I'm well aware of the conditions and the obligations um, of, of licensees. Um, but my point is, is Ariadne's Nectar particularly different to other premises in, in North Kensington? It depends what, what, what you mean by different. Are you speaking about the management or operation? No, of the I'm, I'm talking particularly about um, dispersal of customers after hours and how successful other premises are in that objective. I mean, we do get complaints about dispersal from all premises. Ariadnes is not just singled out. And, exactly. you know, by all means, they're not the only pre premises that has, you know, a problem with their dispersal. However, what we keep finding time after time and time again is a lack of external management. It doesn't seem to be any, um, no effort made by management or staff to make sure that they're not causing a disturbance outside and that is the main difference it's the lack of external management as well and other premises are monitored for their external management too they are thank you right thank you very much i suppose i could comment if i may or miss johnson would like to comment it's also partly a question of context isn't it um, most of Kensington is a um, residential area, really. I mean, this, and uh, suppose if it's the road is quiet, it's hard. It gets more obvious, or maybe not. I don't know. What do you think, Miss Johnson? It can do, but what we do is we understand that patrons do make noise, and you know, on occasions you could try your best to try and control someone, and they will make noise. But what the officers keep reporting, and it seems to be a pattern of complaints, that there's no management of the outside area at all. Um, if that did answer your question, sorry, sir. If not, then I can further explain. OK, no, that's fine. Um, OK, uh, Mr Larkins, are you, is there any, no more questions? Uh, no, I, I think that, um, oh, I, except I see that, um, one of the complaints which is shown on screen, which is from E, um, and they are on behalf of residents. Um, it, it, it's rather interesting that E has been appointed by the residents, is my, my comment. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't think Mr. Charrington is not here, I think. Anyway, he's probably not. Can I just double check if Mr. Charrington uh, is here? Yes, I am. I am here. Oh, yes, of course. But did you, you heard the, well, there's two issues. One is you heard the, the Miss Johnson's presentation. Yes. And then the question, I suppose, when you've dealt, when I've dealt with that, uh, you, I'll give you the chance to comment on the environmental health case, which perhaps you had a chance to read. Um. If not, yes. then we'll just leave it. Uh, then we'll just leave it. It's um, up to you. I have, uh, I just have something. Um, 
to say about this. Uh, I've, I lived, which, sorry, uh, which Kate, which one? About Ms. Um, Johnson? About, or about yes, about one? Ms. Johnson. Okay. Um, just a, a comment on uh, what you were saying about the, the licensing, what, what when you have a license, what you should, uh, what, what's your uh, obligations to, to that to uh, to the license like um, controlling crime and disorder uh, and the protection of children and uh, all that I just have something to say about this uh dimitri is it a question? Always, uh is, is well are there any um well okay for for the question i suppose how many how many residents are complaining uh in the street because obviously i don't know if this came up uh, but the next door neighbor has been, uh, you know, uh, a source. One person has been complaining a lot about this, and there's issue with the installation when it used to be a fish and ship shop and turned into residential, and they didn't insulate their party wall, and that obviously caused a lot of sound escaping into their property and then caused disturbance. Uh, but I'd like to know how many other. Um, um, residents from Latimer Road have been complaining about this because it looks sometimes it does look like there's only one neighbor okay. complaining when you know uh, when it doesn't bother the rest of the street and and that's because of uh, the fact that they didn't insulate the wall properly when it was turned from a commercial uh, fish and ship shop to to a residential property. Um, I can confirm that there is more than one complainant. Um, we're looking at a log at the moment, which is on our screen. I'm not sure if you've got access to that, um, but I've given the residents their um, letters and that goes up to E. There's also a couple of anonymous ones. Um, I haven't given them a letter because I'm unsure whether those anonymous ones have already been referred to in A to E. So there is more than one. I can confirm, even though my log goes up to, I think it's 2018 at present. Um, there has been more than one complainant after 2018. I would also like to draw your attention to Mr. Labar's submission. Um, within his submission, he has letters from various residents. Um, they didn't want to be named. Some of them didn't want to be named because they were fair of reprisal. I see. But some have also explained that they do live on Latimer Road. Um, I think there's one instance of but someone. Are saying, we sure about this? Uh, are we are we 100% sure about this? I am sure. Mr. Mabar may want to confirm that, but um, at least one of them in their um, their letters of support does mention living about 30 yards away. Um, so all so that, I can say uh, is that it is one more, it is more, even contrary to belief, there is more than one complainant. And even if there was more, if, even if there was only one complainant, when noise have visited, they've reported music so loud from across the road or further down the road. Um, so that's all I can say at the moment. Because that, that's quite important though, uh, to to know how how many people not not giving their names and I understand why you wouldn't want to yeah. but just making sure that for real there are uh, more than one there is more than one yes um, okay um, I don't know what can I say else uh, I'm done. Uh, Chair, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. So one thing I prefer, I like in Zoom, it's obvious when you're on mute or not. Anyway, um, <laughs> Mr. Cheriton, uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any question on the environmental health uh, case report? Okay, on the environmental health case? Uh, no. We had a chance to read. Okay, no, thank you very much. We have to move on. I mean, it's already uh, one o'clock and we still have a lot of speakers. So, um, although everybody, I've, we did decide to give everybody 15 minutes as opposed to 10, could I ask people to consider not using it all up because we would like to finish <laughs> today <laughs> before the end of the day. So, I call upon Ashley Wilson from Planning Enforcement to present. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I'll, I will try and rush through this. Um, I've submitted a representation on behalf of the planning department on the grounds of public nuisance and I think it might be useful to go through the planning background. Um, the premises has a historic use as a drinking establishment and as such there's no planning conditions for the hours of operation so we have no controls over this and it was designated as an asset of community value in late 2019 and just to go back to a point that was discussed before in designating it as an asset of community value we have um, we recognised that it the building, it's the building, it's the use that furthers the social well-being and the interests of the local right. community. It's seen as important to the local community and it's focused on the use, not the operations. Um, so we received a planning enforcement complaint on the 2nd of July 2019 and this was in regards to the porch. Um, there's a porch installed in the front entrance and the smoking shelter. Now, this isn't the seating or the awning. It's the shelter itself around the outside. Anyways, in the interest of time, I will sum up my investigation, um, which can all be seen in my representation on the screen. Um, in conclusion, Mr. Kotsakis was given a deadline to remove the unauthorised development. Um, I offered to extend the deadline while he worked out whether to get planning permission or not or understand his rights. No action was carried out within the extended time frame. I extended the deadline a second time. No action was carried out within that time frame. So in the end, I served an enforcement notice on the 22nd of January of this year, requiring the removal of the entrance porch and the smoking shelter. Um, now, we carry out enforcement action proportionately and we look at the, the breach that's identified and the harm that's caused. We always try to to carry out informal negotiations and in this instance the, it, we just failed to resolve the breach. Um, I gave quite a lot of opportunity and it was deemed to be appropriate and expedient to take action. It's not only about the, um, the lack of being able to prove the, the noise um, if, if, the, if the porch is acoustically sound. The porch and the smoking shelter also don't adhere to our planning policies, so there's a lot of visual concerns. It doesn't, it doesn't um, comply with our shopfront um, supplementary planning document. So at the minute, the enforcement notice is being served. Mr. Kotsakis has appealed the notice to the planning inspectorate, and we're at the um, situation. We're at the point where we've both submitted our written statements to the inspector. The next stage is an inspector's site visit, um, which is most likely to be unaccompanied due to the virus. And at the minute, the notice remains on hold. If it's dismissed, the structures should be removed within three months of the inspector's decision. If the appeal is upheld the, by the plan inspector, the structures are granted planning permission. So in conclusion, I've, um, I've submitted my representation on the grounds of the prevention of public nuisance. I've received um, I've received professional advice from the environmental health officers that the porch is not acoustically sound. Um, I've, I've took on the advice of the professionals. I'm not a noise professional. Um, and if the entrance porch does not have any acoustic benefit, it does not prevent noise or public nuisance. And that is um, that's me done. I'm, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, could you, right, well, let me ask the uh, fellow councillors. Councillor Spaulding, any questions? No questions from me, Chairman. Councillor Bennett? No questions, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask a question, actually, is sort of the fundamental question. Um, Ms. Wilson, is how relevant is this to the licensing case? I think it's relevant to the licensing case because it does not prevent noise or public nuisance. So the the the, the porch is not acoustically is not acoustically sound. It doesn't prevent noise or public nuisance. Um, our desired outcome, because it's an authorized it's an authorized structure, which would not gain planning permission. Um, that's the only reason we would serve an enforcement notice if it's reasonable to. Our desired outcome is that there is no porch there. 
So if we win the planning appeal, there should be no porch there. Therefore, there is no, there's no prevention of noise or public nuisance there. Um, Mr Kotsakis had the opportunity to engage in pre-application advice, submit a plan application, find out a bit more technical information or submit a bit more technical information. At the minute, there isn't what what is there doesn't really prevent noise or public nuisance. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We'll have to take that into account, although it, it is in a sense a planning matter, I think. Okay, well, if there's no further question from the councillors, because I don't have a, another question, is now it's a chance for Mr Kotsakis to ask questions of um, Planning Enforcement Officer Ashley Wilson. Mr Kotsakis? Please, yeah. First of all, I'd like to ask the lady if, in the first instance, in their letter, had uh, excluded the possibility of granting a planning permission for that temporary... Sorry, we've lost... Sorry, uh, I'll go uh, again. Uh, I'm just checking that we didn't lose you, that's all. Yeah, okay. No, it's all right if you, oh, you, you, if you pause, but we, I was getting worried we lost you completely, so... Mm. Carry on. Uh, shall I repeat the question? Whether the, the planners excluded in the letter, the first letter to me, the possibility of granting a planning permission for this soundproofing less than two square meters, temporary reports. Okay, so the uh, initial... Positive or negative for planning? So the, my initial letter to you stated that um, you did have the opportunity to apply for planning permission, but we wouldn't recommend it because it's unlikely to be approved. Um, you then sent me an email, and in my second email to, in your email to me, you stated that you wish to submit a planning application. So with that in mind, um, I withheld. I, I said to you that I was going to withhold any formal enforcement action and review it again in a month and give you the opportunity to submit a planning application, but you would require the additional information that's, that proved and illustrated the soundproofing benefits. So the opportunity was there to submit a retrospective plan application. We just have to be open and transparent and say from the start, it's not likely to get to be approved. However, yeah. you do... You, you, you did have the opportunity and we extended deadlines for you to be able to do that. Well, if your advice is negative, it's no point in me applying, is it? No, well, that's why we said at the start, we don't recommend you applying. This is what you recommended, not to apply for permission. But then I'd like to ask you about the structure itself. Because as I watch it now, is is temporary, is made of wood and double glazing and is covered in the inside with this uh, soundproofing synthetic material. And we have checked it and measured it. Did you, about how good it is acoustically? Because it cuts, as I told you in my email, it cuts more than half the noise. How so how you decided that it's not sound acoustically? As I've already discussed, I'm not an environmental health professional and I don't have a background in, in noise or acoustics, so I'm relying on the professional advice of my, of my environmental health colleagues. Yeah, but... Um, huh? um, the opportunity has arose in the in the planning appeal for you to submit the documentation to prove that it is acoustic. Um, I'm not sure if that's been included or not. I, I can't. I can't remember seeing it, but the opportunity has arose for you to prove it's acoustically sound, and I haven't seen that anywhere. I don't think I have to prove it. You have to disprove it, because you claim that it's not sound acoustically. You claiming that. I've built that to stop the noise, uh, following advice of the environmentals going back years. Few of them told me, suggested. Do you know any of that? They're suggesting, because now they're refuting it, lying. I... I built that to stop complaints. And you lot, let alone the party world, now you want me to take it down. So what is your evidence that is not acoustically sound, this little port? 
Um, Mr. Sorry, uh, could I just interject here? Uh, Mr. Kotsakis, I mean, this is a debate that's going to go around and around. Do you, you had this constructed? Who advised you? Perhaps it would help if you had tell I, us I who advised you. Sorry, finish yeah. my sentence. Uh, who advised you uh, that that this construction uh, would provide a, some acoustic shielding and has given you the measurements, which they took some measurements, let's say, with certain music playing inside uh, and stood outside, say, a meter away and measured it and said, here's the evidence. Look, it works or yeah. doesn't. So that's what I think. You know, at the moment, we're just having statements going back and forth. Well, I happen to have done that. Uh, using a sound expert and then a, a builder that built it according to this specification. And we did test it and measure it. And it's still here, double glazed, wood, uh, temporary structure. It doesn't, uh, I mean, the street architecture and aesthetic is everywhere. But the council, after this report from again from next door, which I've been it all for their benefit, they reported me and now they want me to take it down. But it's with the inspector at this. I was asking the question, how come this planning lady decides that this is not acoustically sound? So that's my query and question. Uh, Chair, if I could speak, it's Heidi Titcombe. I'm just wondering sure. if we're straying into planning determinations here, because clearly there's, there's a dispute between Mr. Kosakis and the planning department about the whether the enforcement notice should have been issued. And that's going to be determined um, by the planning inspector. Um, and, and that's really a separate set of proceedings, um, not relating to this issue. I know Mr. Kosakis says he's installed the porch to help prevent noise escape. Um, but but I don't feel that we can really go into the merits of the planning application in this forum. Can I comment on that? You see, in my view, the council is one body and they need to coordinate better. The environmentals had suggested that and I followed their advice building that. So they should probably talk to each other a bit better. So now they, the, the, the plan was to take it down. So this is why I'm saying the confusion emanating from the council. Mr. Kosakis, I, I totally understand what you're saying, uh, as a lot of people do. But unfortunately, in the licensing regime, we, we have to follow the legislation and the guidance. And the guidance clearly tells this committee that they're not to get involved in planning, environmental health or other issues. They basically got to determine whether a premises is promoting the licensing objectives. That's their function. And, and they're deliberately told not to deal with planning issues because they're dealt with by the plan, planning authority. I know it's one council, but when it comes to the law, unfortunately, uh, we have to comply with that those regimes just as you do. Yes, but it's contra you contradicting yourself because the, this plan matter is completely attached with the problem we have because the main problem here is the noise, if I understand well. All this review is to do with the noise. And I tried to con contain as best as I could the noise. And the council itself, that's how the planners are involved. I, didn't, I don't want you to uh, resolve the, the planning issue of this. I'm just telling you that I'm trying to do it as best as I can. So because a pub is a noisy place and opening the door, people laughing and joking, it can be a nuisance. And it can be, uh, yeah, noisy. So I tried it. That's all I'm saying. But the council now, from the other hand, another leg of the council, tell me to take it down. Um, I think, um, Mr. So the question is, did environmental health ask you to put it up and then ask you to take it, or then planning to ask oh, you to take it down? I mean, that's what it, So what the question to environmental health would be, but I think this is a... Uh, um, you know, this is going to be a not long argument. We have no evidence at the moment. Have you, if you've got a written piece of evidence, an email or something that says environmental health advised you to put this up, then 
we can discuss it, but we haven't got any evidence before us that was the case. So you, so I'd, I'd like, you know, so I'd like to actually move on if it's possible. Do you see what I'm getting at? If you have the evidence to say you were advised to do it, then um, it was verbal the advice, and it happened three or four times. And I told, uh, I've already mentioned it. The name was Skinner. One of the officers told me years ago, "Why don't you do one of these?" So now they're refuting. No, I haven't got it. Written, no. But you put this, this, uh, I think this, uh, the, this, I mean, I, I'm only letting it run on because it, if you'd like, it does uh, impact on the licensing question and the noise. Yeah. The, uh, your, your, um, your uh, porch or the, went up recently, didn't it? It went up, I can't remember now, I worked it out what the date was, but it's not that long ago. Four or five years ago, yeah. Um, okay. Well, you know, I think at this stage we, we, it's a difficult one to argue about because we don't have written statements. I don't know whether the, uh, Ms. Titkin would like to um, comment on that, about the discussion about you know whether Mr. Kotsakis was advised years ago to stick, put it up by environmental health. Uh, um, thank you, Chair. I, I mean, the, the issue regarding the porch goes to one of the issues. It doesn't cover... Um, operating beyond hours, and it doesn't cover it doesn't cover patrons sitting in the front forecourt area, whether they're waiting for taxis. So, I mean, the committee can note what uh, Mr. Kosakis has said, and he could, and they can note exactly what Environmental Health have said, and they can attach what weight they they consider appropriate to it based on all the evidence that they've they've got but i don't think you can go any further than that today because there's no evidence one way or another okay mr kotakis can may we um move on or do you have any i think we should we should move on um questions of ashley wilson the uh was the La mr chariton do you have a question Um, yes, just um, for the for the front porch, um, just a comment. It's not really a question, but um, I, I know Adrian, uh, the a sound specialist, that came and we we did do some tests. I'm a sound engineer myself, and uh, we did test it at the time, uh, playing some music and seeing with a um, uh, with a meter, uh, a decibel meter to to see how much it does cut and it was all in the intention to comply with um, the previous license review and you know trying to better uh, be better the efforts to you know comply to to what you to what you demand that's it okay. so, yes. right so it's not a question is it okay hello. well mr, mr. larkins would you like to ask a question uh, yes, I would like to ask Ashley Wilson how she would define harm. But she mentioned that this porch is doing harm. Is it such an eyesore that um, uh, people shy away and, and I don't know, it's how do you define harm? Thank you, Mr. Larkin. I'm going to refer to my um, report for my my enforcement notice for this um i the porch does not comply with one two three four six different local plan policies i think this is delving more into the planning side of things now it it does it, it doesn't comply with six different local plan policies or the shop front um supplementary planning document i think it visually detracts from the architectural detail of the corner. I don't think it's high quality. I think it appears temporary. I think it doesn't look robust. Um, it looks a bit too functional. It doesn't contribute to the existing context. Um, it's not a conservation area, but we've still got to think about how it does appear. But um, like I said, I think that detracts from, from the licensing objectives. Yes, it's unfortunately, it seems that um, we're, we're dealing with planning matters of a licensing hearing, and you're, you're, you know, the other speakers have, um, the other speakers of the council said, well, you know, planning doesn't really enter into it. So, you know, the, this whole thing, from the point of view of Mr. Kostakis, 
he's faced with a situation that's a cross between Alice in Wonderland and Catch-22. He's damned if he does nothing and he damned is, he's damned if he tries to do something. Well, I, so... Uh, are we... Okay, well, can we... Could we move on? Um, it is a difficult question, but as you quite rightly said, it's a planning matter. And, uh, you know, one could debate various aspects of it, like after years of being, you know, well, anyway, I don't want to get into that. It's a, really a planning matter. And I think we should try to focus on the post-2018 review uh, incidents that have been reported, uh, been claimed by uh, or reported by environmental health. So Chairman, I think... Mr. Chairman, can I have a word? You did, I think you missed me. Who's Adam? that? Who's that? Uh, yes. Yes, I think the, the sorry, I should have said um, the reason is that you are actually a um, you're not a, 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 a you're not a formal objector, I think, are you? You're not a formal I, I, objector, I, I, but you are. Um, I pardon? Yes. I don't know which category I fall in. I thought you you put me in that category. Earlier. Yes, I was no. sorry. That was I'm told I was told by my legal advisor that that was an error. On my okay. part, and that you are—I should have announced it. I'm sorry. I did kind of wait for. I, I was. It was in my head to say something, but then I was focusing on what the other people were saying, and um, okay. you were added later to the list of was, people. So you you can't. Uh, apparently, this doesn't give you the right to speak at this point. But if you, okay. I suppose, you could speak as a witness for Mr. Kotsaki. So we've got 15 minutes, so it'll be hard to pack everything in. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ko Mr. Kotsakis, it's. Um, your turn and uh, as i said you have 15 minutes up to 15 minutes and you can call your witnesses which are you've got one or two counselors and um you have well several speakers listed and you, we know who they are that's uh, uh well obviously ariadne kotsakis evelyn davis nick shirley i don't know henry pickett may not be here but you don't all have to speak, but you can speak for Mr. Kotsakis, for Mr. Kotsakis, if he so wishes or if you so wish. Mr. Kotsakis, the floor is yours. Chair, you. Chair, Chair, Mr. Kotsakis also has a video, so could oh, you yes. clarify when he would like that to be shown? Thank you for the reminder, uh, Ms. Titkin, Mr. Kotsakis. When would you like your video to, to be shown? Now or during Chair, or at the end? I would like to speak if, if you allow me later on. But could we fit all of this within 15 minutes? We will have to. <laughs> we might allow a minute or two flexibility, but we, we really have to get on with it. Uh, Councillor Bastia, thank you. I know it's a tricky one, this. Mr. Kotsakis, when would you like to show your video? Uh, we can uh, do it even now, Chair, but uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a long uh, list for me to narrate. But this is a, a typical example I've brought out of misreporting by these uh, officers. Okay, uh, so shall they play the video? Mr. Yeah. Saunders, are you ready to play the video? Yes, if you just bear with us for a moment or two, Chair, and we'll get that up on screen. Okay. Video chair, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Can I proceed now, please? Yes, sure. 
the floor all yours. I mean, that's part of your presentation, yeah. so to speak. Right. Uh, this was one of few occasions when upon uh, these musicians and many uh, members of the audience from the theater across the road that was showing uh, Jazz Aid, the play, uh, will come to the pub after 10 o'clock after the end and before, but after they'll, uh, they'll do a little set for a laugh, like a sing-along. So this is when uh, a lot of this October, uh, September uh, visit uh, occurred. And they were reported for uh, Amplified music, whereupon well, you saw it, yourself. it wasn't amplified and it was not any percussion at all. So uh, the noise level, and this, the port was already installed and the doors were shut, so the noise level, I don't think it, it will uh, make up uh, an abatement. For these instances, we've been prosecuted criminally by Mr. Labar, but Talking about him now, one thing at a time, he, as soon as he did that, he also managed to notify the landlords of the uh, application he eventually submitted himself against the, the license and the review that we're doing now. The landlords knew it in advance. This is called the inside information and all this. So they served me with a notice to, 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 for not uh, notifying them, which is unprecedented in the previous uh, license reviews. Uh, but they just happened to know in Guernsey, they, they weren't disturbed by the noise in Guernsey from Latin Road, but they started proceeding to evict me. And they had tried that as soon as they bought the building uh, five, six years ago. So this is um, between our two uh, agents that they want me to close down. They wanted to develop this farm as, uh, as it happened all around Kensington and Chelsea into a different type of property. And then the, uh, the neighbor next door wants the, the price of the property to go up a bit because it won't be next to a pub. So uh, this is, uh, for all the councillors' information, is a proper local family independent business. It's not part of a chain. We managed to be a free house now. And we initiated with the Residents Association of St. Helen and St. Quentin's this nomination. It took us two, three years. So it wasn't the council that came running and said, let's save the park. Although they have got this kind of planning now to stop pubs becoming houses or whatever. So uh, the noise, as uh, you can imagine, uh, outside the pub, we cannot take our patrons and tuck them in bed quietly. As they leave, they might laugh and go, this is almost inevitable. So, but this uh, complainer is constant. Even a loud fart is reported to the council. So this is uh, it's impossible for us to operate. And this application is attempting to asphyxiate us as a business by imposing this uh, restriction, further restriction, A, not to use the outside patio. This front patio is like our front garden. This is our main trading area during the fair weather. A lot of people love to sit out there, and 8.30 closing the patio is a disaster for, for us, because this is the attraction of this pub, the, the front patio looking west and south. So, talking about planning, the, what they're moaning about is this, uh, for the shelter, as they call it, is all it is, is some timber to support the owning in case of, of stormy weather. So it doesn't mean security and safety. It's safe. What the planners allow and permit it is 100 yards up the road, the Thai place, and they build, they cover the whole front of the old terrace house with a permanent, uh, what we call it, conservatory. So, and this is allowed. Me, a little less than two square meters sport, I'm not allowed, which serves not not anything else other than stopping 
the complaints about noise. So uh, it has been quite frustrating for us because we can't concentrate on our business and we have to, to go through hell with the, the, the planners, the environmental, who, as I said, this boy, uh, Labar, or one of his team, informed the landlords and they started proceedings to evict us and uh, they failed again, as they, uh, it happened to them before. And I have all the documents and the notice they served me. This is beyond his remit and it's very suspicious to, to, to go and find the agents of the landlords to tell them that before he even launched the application. So this is uh, scandalous, I think. And this is why I objected for him to be the applicant. So it's, you know, uh, I'll take his report with a pinch of salt because I think he's biased. So this is, and obviously the rest of them have gang up against the party, <laughs> trying to kill it off. Because this is the plan of the next door neighbor who calls them, who calls the council every day of the week. If there's people outside, we had that down uh, during lockdown. The police came twice because we were sitting outside quietly in the daytime, having a drink with people who live upstairs and my daughter. And she called the police. I couldn't believe it. I mean, we, the pub was shut. But we shut. It's my, I live upstairs. It's my residence, too. So this is a joke. This is like prosecution badly done. And the council goes along with it. So, and he's a sole complainer. I don't know if she gang up other people uh, in the area, but in my uh, knowledge, is this woman next door that complains. So uh, anyway, you, you have some of the other neighbors' uh, uh, letters and uh, support, uh, emails and all that. So going back to the evidence of these uh, officers, we have a little machine here I can show you. It's inexpensive. And it measures decibels. And we have uh, installed years ago limited for in our amplifier. So, and this port helps. So, this is the situation with the noise. They need to have one of these. Otherwise, it's hearsay. Audible is not a noise disturbance, nuisance, uh, or abatement. So, uh, I think that is heavy handed tactics against us. And it's not fair because we can just about survive in this location at the pub. And it's almost miraculous that it still exists as a pub. This. So uh, I, I would expect the council to be a bit more supportive and not take on frivolous, vexatious, and repetitious uh, complaints on board. Uh, I, I, I mean, the other thing, talking about anonymity of the complaints, uh, I know this court, we had it before, it's not a proper court, law court, that's why, you know, we go to the magistrate if we want to appeal. But you cannot permit perjury, because I can anonymously say someone is a murderer, and if you kill someone, this, you know, this is not, it shouldn't be allowed for fairness and justice and all that the anonymity. We had that before with Alison, and we were accused of being dangerous to children. She read all the uh, uh, objectives of the law, and she, she filed it on us. And this was disproved there and then, and by the police. And when, so, the, I mean, we cannot have all these regurgitations and put it on us again, like the other uh, uh, official uh, start uh, reading out. So, this is this has been done. Uh, Mr. Katsakis, would you like your other witnesses to speak as well? Yes, oh, yes we please. have Evelyn now because she has to go to a meeting and I know she has something to say. Okay, um, fair enough. Is, are you agreeable, Mr. Katsakis? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, Evelyn yeah. Davis, the yeah, floor is Evelyn. yours. Yeah, this is Evelyn Davis speaking. Um, and I just wanted to um, just make some observations. Obviously, I'm aware that I'm not uh, able to answer, ask any questions. Um, I was present at the last review in, on the 25th of June 2018, and I did participate in that review in support of Mr Kotsakis. Um, I'm very disappointed to be back here today um, listening to a further licensing review. 
Um, I think that it's important to listen to residents who support Mr Kotsakis, not just the ones who complain. I know that the procedure for allowing a licence review is very, very, it's very easy to, to, to commence a licensing review, it seems. And I think that that process does allow um, vexatious complaints, really. I just think it's quite easy. I mean, I live five doors down from the pub and I have been here for over 20 years and I have seen the operation of the pub. I'm not someone who tolerates a lot of noise. I, I've got a professional career. I, I have to be able to have a clear mind and I, I, I don't like a lot of noise, to be perfectly honest. Um, the, of the recent complaints, I, I just don't recognise them at all. I mean, people are, are saying that they fear for their safety and they that the place is dirty. Well, that isn't but something... You, know, you have five minutes left for submission. Yeah, that's that's fine. I'll be done by then. I, I just don't I just don't recognise those complaints. I don't, and I think that the when you look at the anonymous complaints, particularly, they, they do refer to the next door neighbour. And I know she's I've got nothing against her at all. And we are, we are on good speaking terms, but I know you can see through those complaints, anonymous complaints, they all refer to her, uh, uh, citing like intimidation and, and harassment. And it, 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 there is a long and unhappy history between Mr. Clarkis and the next door neighbour, I'm afraid. And uh, I do think you. some of these complaints are born out of that. Thank you, Ms. Davis. May I ask the others, because the others want to speak as well, so we have not much time left. Councillor Murray, um, speak. Pardon? Yes, Councillor Bakhtiar, are you happy for uh, you, Mr. Kotsak? Yes. Is okay for Councillor Bakhtiar to speak now? Yes. Okay, you. off you go. Chairman, committee officers, uh, I just just a gentle reminder that the world and the country is going through the biggest economical crisis because of COVID, and I would I would like to remind you of that. And hundreds of thousands of people are losing losing their jobs. And we don't want to contribute into that. This is one. Uh, one of the biggest question I have, most important question to me is, I don't want to know who, but how many people, this question been asked many times, how many individuals complain? Let's talk about June 2018 until now only. And uh, this committee unfairly listened and wasted time on listening uh, on two subjects. One of them, the porch is purely planning matter, which is dealt with with a different route. I don't know why it is included in the agenda. Uh, and the second issue is uh, those individuals who are uh, concerned about the noise pollution uh, uh, coming out of this pub, local pub. None of these uh, individuals and residents contacted me raising concerns about the speeding cars and motorbikes uh, waking, waking people up in the middle of night, early hours of the morning, uh, cars and motorbikes driving 60, 70 miles an hour on Latimer, which is the biggest issues on that road. They are not concerned about this, which is a, a real danger on pets, children and elderly and elderly people, but they are concerned about this. And why are we mentioning cases which is dealt with with previous reviews? Why did we why did you allow that, Chairman? Sorry, what are, At least, is that a question to me or? Well, for everyone, we shouldn't deal with. Yeah. We had two previous reviews dealt with previous cases. Whatever is in front of this committee should be between June 2018 until now. Why do we go back before this this time? We need to. In these difficult times nowadays, because of COVID and the economical impacts, implications because of it, we need to be seen or we need to act, the council and officers, to support local businesses. And this is something personal, but I would like to draw your attention to that uh, Mr. Kostasis is ill and we don't want to, I think it's, it's in the report somewhere. We need to take this in consideration. It's not chairman, it's not black and white. It's not what the officers and police officers say. This is entirely true. I don't want to accuse anyone, but we are dealing with humans. We are dealing with Mr. Kostakis. He, he is a fantastic member of our community. And you are all aware that North Kensington is a traumatized because of because of Grenfell and other. And on top of that, we have COVID. So we, I would like to 
ask the councillors and the co committee members specifically and you chairman to look into this this uh, uh, issues that I have raised and take it take them in consideration. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bakhtiar. Um, I think we're going to allow uh, a minute or two extra just to allow anybody else to speak for Mr. Kotsakis. Is there anyone else? Did you, um, Ariadne Kotsakis, yeah, want to speak? I'm, I'm happy to speak. I am Dimitri's daughter. We, he runs a family business here. We have always run a family business here. There's never been any problems. And, you know, it's very peaceful. This isn't a busy pub. We just about managed to survive. And the idea that we cause more nuisance and noise and problems to the community rather than what we provide seems to me ridiculous. And as as Councillor Baxter said, you know, this is a tough time for everyone. And I think we need to listen to the other residents methods of support as much as the handful of complainants because this is a invaluable part of our community and and has been since my dad's run it. So really like you to take into consideration every other, which are hundreds of letters of support that go beyond the, the handful of anonymous ones you, you have in front of you today. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Kotsakis. So right. May I say something? May I say something? Who are you? <laughs> Sorry, identify Dawn. yourself, please. Pardon? Dawn Leonard. Dawn Leonard. Yes, Dawn Leonard. This is your chance to speak. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, it, uh, I would like to um, reiterate Mr. Larkin's comments about uh, paying weight and the validity of anonymous complaints against Nectar Bar, Ariadne's Nectar Bar. Um, they, uh, for fear of reprisal, um, this casts Mr. Kostakis in a very bad light, and I think this is unfair. Um, I've known him for nearly 40 years and have found him always to be kind, honest, and forthright. Um, my son has been having his birthday parties uh, for the last six or seven years, and I've never come across any this pollution or license infringement. Um, it's, a, it's a pub with a special ambience. Um, it has a great standard of service and entertainment. Uh, Mr. Kotsakis is always mindful of his neighbours and the neighbourhood. And in my opinion, has never seen anything unlawful. I mean, any any license infringements. He offers an essential service to the community and especially the Greek community in the area. We don't really have many places to go to and his life should therefore not be reviewed. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, um, Ms. Leonard. Do we have Nick Shirley who would like to speak for a minute or two or so? Yes, if you'd give me just a moment, I'll be very brief. Firstly, yeah, okay. uh, Sarah... <laughs> Sorry about this, but Sorry. <laughs> yeah. go on. Can I speak? Yes, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Sarah Lefebvre uh, did make one mistake. She said that the 2018 notice hearing being brought by a councillor, ward councillor, it hadn't. It was brought by an ex-councillor who'd been um, <coughs> expelled from her party as not being a representative of that party. I'd just like to point that out as a matter of fact. Now, I'm a near neighbour. I've been here for 23 years. When I first came here, the pub was called the British Volunteer and it was rough and there was trouble there. Since Mr. Kasakis took it over, there's been far less noise and trouble, and I found it a very pleasant pub to go to. I live only five doors down, I'm at number 284. Now, both my wife and myself have jobs where we have to um, have clear heads uh, in the daytime, in the working day. She's a solicitor in the city. Um, and uh, we sleep with the windows open, and we're very light sleepers. I very, very rarely get problems from um, the pub. In the first few years that uh, uh, Dimitri ran the pub, I think it's fair to say that there were late night parties, but this hasn't been a recent occurrence at all. I can't remember the last time I was disturbed from the pub. There had been disturbances in the street. They happened with squatters across the road in one of the industrial units, but certainly not from the pub. So I would, um, I'd also like to say that when I first arrived here 23 years ago, there were four pubs with an easy walk, three on Latimer Road and one just around the corner. 
Linzer. Three of those pubs have now closed. We're just left with one. Now, if Mr. Sarkis was to lose his license, uh, the um, owners, Goldman Sachs, would immediately do their best to try and proclaim it an unviable business and convert it. And we would lose the last pub in the area, as well as Mr. Sarkis losing his job. Anyway, so that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shirley. Uh, thank you for mentioning the correction about who called the last review. You are correct, of course, that um, Miss Allison was is an, was a former councillor at that point. But I would like to add a correction to the correction. Uh, she did run as a Conservative candidate in St Helens. Uh, so the question about expulsion of the party and so on and so forth is a debate. But I just want to, since we're going to correct one thing, I might as well correct the other as well. Um, but thank you very much. Is there anyone else uh, for Mr. Kotsakis? I think that covers everybody. And Chairman, I think uh, Councillor Thaxter uh, had a hand raised. Oh, yes. But uh, yes, Councillor Thaxter, did you want to speak for Mr. Mr. Kotsakis? You're on mute if you are trying to speak. Welcome to the club of forgetting to unmute. Are you talking to me? Sorry, Hugo. Um, no, I'm talking to Councillor Thaxter. I'm hoping yes. that she can. Uh, she want, I want to know. Okay. Councillor Thaxter doesn't appear to be on mute, um, so I'm not sure if she's having a technical difficulty. Hang on, I can see. Um, just a minute. I can see from her, her little name that she's not actually on mute, so she should be able to speak. Um. Just a moment. I'm checking if she wants to speak. If she's having technical difficulties, we can get someone in governance to give her a call and see if we can assist. Uh, okay. Um, Gula, uh, Chair, please, can I finish off uh, my... my just little... a second. Just allow me. I've got to concentrate on trying to get to understand if Councillor Thaxter wants to speak. I think she's having a, a technical issue. So let. Um, oh, she said yes. So, um, well, okay, Mr. Mr. Kotsakis. Okay, have another minute or two until we sort Councillor Thaxter out. Okay, thank you. Uh, all I wanted to say is that these uh, applications uh, uh, demand for not using the patio after eight thirty, uh, not holding private functions that we rely on to survive the revenue and not me being the DPS after 19 years almost uh, is going to kill this uh, place any three any of the three uh, this is like impossible so, so this is like slow economic starvation for us if this goes through any of the three like the, because this is purposely to close the pub down indirectly instead of taking the license away doing it with these three conditions on the license. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kutsakis. Uh, just a quick word, Miss, uh, sorry, Councillor Faxter says that she can't hear. So, Governance, are you able to contact contact her and sort her out, so to speak? I yes, mean, we can but, move on uh, with questions in the meeting. Yes, uh, we're, we're going to try and get hold of her and um, sort her out. So, carry on and we, we can cue her back in at an appropriate moment. Chair, it's uh, Heidi Tickham. I just wanted to clarify, um, because Mr. Kos Kosakis um, has just said um, a few things which I'm not sure are correct. And I just want to make clear what this application is about. Um, he said not using the front forecourt. Well, as I understand it, the condition on the license says you can't use it after 10 o'clock at night. And I haven't heard anyone requesting that that condition should be changed. And no one has asked for Mr. Kosakis to be removed as the DPS. I think the applicant and the other supporting parties are actually asking for the license to be revoked. So I'm just clarifying that 
um, and um, Mr. Kosakis may well want to just add a few more comments, but I just want to make it clear what this committee is actually considering. Thank you, Ms. Titcombe. Mr. Kotsakis, you can, uh, while while we're trying to sort um, yeah. Councillor Thaxter out, please a talk, quick, speak yeah. about that. A quick clarification. Uh, this time around, I didn't see the revoking of the license. I saw these three conditions to be placed upon. But uh, either way, uh, you know, it, uh, it's what it is. I mean, the, uh, the result of any of these conditions will be death for the public. And obviously, some uh, well-wishers want exactly that. So, and this is what we, we are here today, because they try to tap us out. That's all. And th this was in the application, these conditions I was on about. OK, thank you. Um, I guess we can now move to questions of Mr. Kotsakis. And I mean, I can kick off with a couple of questions. Um, so, and I'll, I'll ask them both, um, uh, Mr. Kotsakis, and then you can answer them as you wish. Uh, one is from the various things you've said, and I'm really trying to focus on incidents since the last review, um, because, because obviously the last review dealt with what happened before, is that are you suggesting that the evidence collected by the officers who don't live in the area and have no interest in um, in the pub as such, you know, that they that all the evidence that's been collected and presented in the report is inaccurate? And this is I'm speaking about the officers' evidence who came there to listen to sound, who came in the cars and then got out the cars, and so on. So that question one is: Are you suggesting they are inaccurate? Yep. And the second, okay, well, that's a short answer. Uh, that's a very strong allegation uh, that you're saying. I can elaborate on that if you want. Yes. To. Okay, that? you go ahead first. You, I'll ask my second question later. You go ahead. Yes, please yeah. do. Uh, sorry, yeah. The, uh, I was explaining to you, for instance, their report, that's why it's unreliable, is, uh, uh, for instance, they're talking about these visits. Uh, that there was amplified music blaring and all that, and it wasn't. You saw the video. Then they don't measure the noise. They say it was audible because it's a quiet street and it can be audible, but that is not disturbance. That's what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting the officer do that in purpose, but obviously they might have some instructions because the phone calls to the environmentals is constant. So, uh, like very frequent <laughs> so it has become ridiculous so they come down and they say yeah we can share it you can share it uh, and they sit across the road i see them in the car and then they come to the door okay yeah you can hear it mate but that doesn't mean it's the train <coughs> makes a lot more noise than that so i mean that's that's the the long answer yeah I know, but i mean just to clarify <laughs> There's two issues here. One is, are they giving you facts or you're interpreting? So factually speaking, are you now agreeing that they have heard the sound and the reports are accurate, but you are disagreeing about the interpretation and the meaning of what they heard? Can I just clarify that? Because yes, one exactly. is much more serious than the other. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They did visit and they could probably hear it. Uh, but all I'm saying is, the interpretation is inaccurate and the volume of the music is not such as to uh, make it an abatement or a nuisance. Okay, thank you. Now, the second question uh, relates to the last bit of what you were saying, namely about the three conditions which you said would so I think your words were kill the business. Yeah. Now, the three conditions, if I remember rightly, were imposed and they were imposed. I mean, we're not aware, but that's to be resolved separately about whether they apply or not. But they were imposed uh, precisely, I think, on the grounds of keeping you going. Trying to, don't you think, don't you think, if you remember, do you not think it was an effort to keep you going rather than to shut you down because you, you, you say a lot that people want to shut you down? I can't speak about your freeholders and about the, you know, but I, I can speak about the council. And I know from all the things we do, the last thing we want to do is to close any business down, especially not private small businesses. So do you not 
remember that why those conditions were imposed? Of course I do, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether you uh, had information about the last uh, application. Uh, this was uh, peppered with slander. So I was accused of intimidation, being dangerous to children, violence here, disturbance. There was never been violent. There is no disturbance. I'm not dangerous. I was looking after the kids. They were taking the ball in the middle of the road. One of them asperged, and I was acting as a playground master because the vans and the cars are speeding up and down. And they, they killed the sack next to the pub, and kids kick the ball. So me danger to children, this is terrible, this is unacceptable. And this is what they were doing the last time. And this is why I'm, I'm bitter, because they allowed that woman to, to, you know, to throw muck at me. And, and this is not fair. And the, this kind of same thing, again, she was, uh, how you say, approached by this neighbor next door. It's, it's the same story, it's a different episode now. And she fronted this application of 18 based on false allegations, completely false allegations. That was unacceptable. And now I can see them being reused. And this is not very good. So, and you cannot ask someone to, to testify on oath in this type of court because it's not a proper court. Because people can come and say whatever they want. Uh, it's court free. Get away with it. Well, Mr. Kotsakis, uh, I think. Uh, with a lot, some quite a lot of evidence, significant evidence was presented to support the contention of, of the complainants of noise and nuisance. So I just wanted to m mention that I, you know, we don't want to spend too much time what happened in the last review, but it's just that we we need to come to some sort of conclusion here. Yeah. Um, that not this minute, but I mean we have to think about what we've heard from you and from the other parties that there was evidence presented clear evidence i mean video evidence right so it's not just statements it's video evidence dated timed of noise and nuisance and that was presented and that's what uh, i think led the committee to decide to uh, try with certain conditions to keep you going because you remember that the applicant tried to re get your license revoked and the committee then tried its best not to do that yeah. I mean, do you recommend that? Chair, Could I just mention that? Yeah. Chair, just to um, assist um, yes. everyone, including Mr. Kosakis, I wonder if um, page um, 39 of the report could be pulled up. Paragraph okay. Thank you. one, two. <clears throat> if you could just go up slightly um, so, so I can see paragraph one, two completely. If you, if you look at this, um, this is the conditions that the committee back in uh, September 2018 attached to the license. And if you see on paragraph one, subparagraph two, it says the committee decided to add the following conditions to the license, which were agreed with the premises license holder. And it then lists all the conditions which were agreed with the premises license holder and that's including um, the restrictions on the front forecourt area at 10 o'clock. So that decision records that, that in fact Mr Costatis at that time did agree those conditions rather than it simply being imposed because as you say the committee were trying to avoid Re revoking the license and I just wondered if Mr Costatis if he could refresh his memory and perhaps comment on that. Uh, thank you Ms Titkin, very useful. I could do, I didn't, uh, I didn't write this paragraph <laughs> mentioned uh, and I did not agree with it and that's why I appealed it. So uh, I'm happy to clear the patio at 10.30 <laughs> the summer, uh, the peace house and comply with it. Uh, I didn't write these conditions, the council did, and I did not agree with it, that's why I appealed it. So, and I appealed it straight away, and it's still pending. So, that's the end of that. Well, we are waiting for, you will get a chance, as we discussed earlier, that you can submit the evidence that you about this appeal, because, as you know, there's a dis, dis, 
there's two views on this. Uh, not well, two. It's not so much views, but two two um, perceptions of what happened. There's, the council is not aware of an appeal, and not aware of any documents that you submitted to the council at the time. But you said you did. So you are said you are going to provide the emails that you sent to the council and a copy of the appeal notice. Uh, so we chair, can't discuss it any further, I think. Or can chair, we? I, I may have an update which environmental health may be able <coughs> to assist you on. Okay. Because um, I understand that there are other proceedings which Mr. Kosatis is involved in with the council. Right. And there is going to be a hearing in September. And I'm just wondering if there is some confusion and it may be helpful if uh, environmental health or, or um, Sarah Leverve could clarify these other proceedings, because I think there may have been a confusion as to what proceedings are pending. Thank you. That's a good idea, because uh, I mean, already we had this, let's say, this sort of um, slight dissonance in that we'd expect a licensing case to be heard in a Westminster Magistrates Court, whereas Mr. Kotsakis mentioned, I think, a South London court. So that already, you know, rang a bell. I think I mentioned it at the time. So what um, what do we do now? Wait for Mr. Lefebvre to comment, or how would you like to play that? What do you think we should do, Ms. Titkin? Well, I just wonder if either uh, Mr. Lebar or Ms. Lefebvre can, can update us if there are proceedings in September, because it may be that this has caused the confusion. They're not Indeed. they're not an appeal, uh, but there are proceedings. And I'm wondering if that is, in fact, what Mr. Uh, Kostatis is referring to. Mr. Fevre, are you able to yes. comment at this point? I, I, I can. Uh, there has been some work going on behind the scenes. What I can say, nobody seems to know about any extant licensing appeal. There are two court dates in September I think they are Westminster Magistrate Court listings, and those are listings on the 18th of September and the 9th of September, and they relate to, respectively, the prosecution that's being brought against Mr Katsakis for breaches of the abatement notice, and I think separately for non-payment of the fixed penalty notice. So there are September court listings that may or may not be adjourned, but they are not, and nobody's been able to discover any evidence of any appeal against the licensing decision of 2018. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lefebvre. Perhaps I could just add here that, uh, given some of the things that have been said, Mr. Um, Kotsakis, do you realise that abatement means to quieten down? Uh, I'm just wondering if that was clear. I'm sorry if it sounds you know, a bit strange, but yeah, I'm just wondering that. if the me meaning of the abatement notice and what it means actually is clear. It's fairly clear, yeah. Okay. So, what do you think of um, what Ms. Lefebvre just said, that there are different court case, court cases, court hearings scheduled for next month, but nothing to do with the appeal of the um, well, deci de de review decision? Well, the notice I have, I did submit it, and I did notify the council, and I have to go and look for the, for the email. Okay. <laughs> I see. But so far, nothing has turned up. As you could see, Mr. Lefebvre has investigated quickly and found two court cases pending, I, but I not know appeal. Of the 18th, I don't know. Of. Uh, I haven't been notified. I don't know. The 9th, I have been notified. Uh, okay. Funny enough, I cannot attend that because I have a urologist appointment. In Paris. So, uh, but I'll, I'll have to go back because it, it impressed me too that it was so slow for this appeal to come up. But I don't know, maybe it was to do with uh, COVID, I don't know why. But I'm still expecting to, to go to court for that. Right. Um, uh, thank you very much. Now, I, I wanted to say that Councillor Thaxter is back in. And um, perhaps before we continue the questions of Mr. Kotsakis, Councillor Thaxter can um, speak on behalf for, for, of him for a minute or two in case some questions arise as well, because it's all part of Mr. Kotsakis' uh, Thank you, Chair. Go ahead. I'm back in. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that um, I've been listening to this airing for quite some time now, and it seems as if, you know, there's this force against this pub that is not necessary because that's the most friendliest pub I've ever been to in North Kensington, actually. There's no need for me to feel afraid 
they're very welcoming pleasant and i've never experienced any form of um unsocial anti-social behavior um it it is being alleged by the officer that the pub is not actually in favor of the local community this is not true as a ward councillor, i can testify that the pub has the unconditional support of the majority of the local residents further the council who triggers the review the council who triggers the review and previous time no longer represents the residents on the ward in any capacity as she was not re-elected by her residents so her opinions and actions are not relevant i just think that we need to come together to find a way of us working with this pub instead of breaking this pub down because it's a fantastic atmosphere and welcoming you know i've been to quite a lot of pubs around Latbrook Grove and it, it gets noisy but from time to time I've never been to that pub and it's noisy and I do try and pop in from time to time uh, thank so you. I just want you oh, to take sorry. what I said into consideration and the council um, promised local residents that they are going to support local business and I think that's what we should do and that should be at the forefront of our business moving forward thank you uh, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Thaxter. I would like to refer you to the my own comments or questions to Mr. Kotsakis and, and the others that were brought up and um, point to the report where after at the last review, um, every effort was made by the committee to keep the business going. And uh, it's basically noise and nuisance that's that's been at stake with evidence presented. I think, were you there? I can't remember if you were there at that hearing, but you may remember evidence. Yes, I was. Presented. Yes, so I you, was, and yes, you, you, um, the council was in favour of, you know, um, supporting uh, the pub, and this is what we need to continue to do, support. Where can we find a way of support? You know, they, with every problem, there's a solution. Well, we I have to say it, uh, the committee then attempted a solution by putting in some extra conditions, which the committee hoped would end the matter once and for all. And so I hope you can see that, uh, you know, there's a there's a unity of mind here to keep the pub going or any business of this type. Absolutely. And um, so uh, so maybe I can say so thanks very much. But I hope you can see that. And um, could we ask questions? Could we continue with the questions now? Um, and I would say, depending on what happens afterwards, because Mr. Larkins and well, Mr. Charrington have left. Is he gone? Or is he here? Mr. Hugo Chat has left. Ms. Saunders, is he left? I believe, I, I believe Mr. Cheriton has returned. Just let me confirm. And the reason I ask is because after Mr. Kotak's presentation, we have two more, and it's now two o'clock, and I was going to suggest no, that we I have believe, a short break. I believe Mr. Cheriton has left, so it's just Mr. Larkin at this point who will... Uh, okay, so if, if everybody's willing, uh, let's just finish this, and then, uh, yeah, and then we just have Mr. Larkin's after that, and then we are at the end of the hearing, as far as I can tell. So uh, um, let's ch chair just to remind you that um, Miss um, Levev and the licensing authority and planning can, of course, ask questions of Mr. Kosakis and the other. I was just, yes, I was just going to um, get to the questions of Mr. Kosakis, but I just want to say if people were wondering about a loo break or something, then uh, I thought if we could just hold on and finish this session, we might get there quite quickly. So we've had Mr. Kotak's presentation. We have questions. Members, would you like to ask a question? I've asked mine. So, Councillor Bennett, Bennett, would you like to ask a question or do? Uh, yes, I will ask a question, Chair. Um, Mr. Kotsakis, uh, can you hear me okay, by the way? It's a little bit echoey in here. I well, hear I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Kotsakis, okay. can you hear well? Did he yeah. say yes? Yeah, okay. great. Um, uh, I just wanted to check the video that you showed um, uh, of the uh, three musicians playing music. Um, uh, I was wondering if that was on the case that is referred to in the papers of 4th of October. Um, 4th of October 2019, where they refer to uh, uh, three musicians playing. Was it, were they one in the same case? 
Yes, there were a few occasions of these three musicians. They were performing in the theater across the road. Okay. There were a few nights that they came here after ten o'clock and play a little set. So, so I mean, it it looked like a great atmosphere and and a huge amount of fun, but it did also seem to be very loud. And uh, the officers say on the fourth of October. Um, they attended at midnight and that music was still playing, those musicians were playing. And your license uh, does say that live music must end at 10 p.m. So would you acknowledge that that is a breach of your licensing uh, conditions? It's true if you consider this uh, restricted license of 18, yeah. So, So you would accept that that was a breach? Well, not if the old license was still valid. This is we're having a, a dispute about that because it's been appealed that dispute. Okay. Uh, 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 sorry, um, councillor. Can I just explain the hours of the music was not changed in the September 2019 review. 18. Sorry, is it? There was no review in 19, was there? Sorry, 2018 review. So the hours for music was already 10 o'clock. That that they were not changed. So the hours for any music prior to, to the 2018 review should have finished at 2200 hours. Yes, uh, may I say that there has been a change in the legislation over that, and we are allowed to play till 11. They, they passed a, a national legislation on that, and, you know, the, so the, the time of the music on every part did change. That's what I can't remember top of my head a few years ago. Mm. But this was midnight we're talking about, though, Mr. Yeah. Katsakis. It was midnight, yeah. Yeah. So, so whichever way you look at it, it is a breach of yeah. the licensing conditions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and then the very next day, uh, well, let's go to the 6th. Of, that was on the 4th of October. 6th of October, um, 12.55 a.m., almost uh, one in the morning, um, officers report loud amplified music um, and speaking to you and you saying that you did not recognise the new licensing conditions, uh, but your, uh, as Ms Tickham said, your licence both before 2018 and after 2018 had the playing of recorded music and the playing of live music to finish at 10, so would you acknowledge that that was a breach of your licensing conditions? Well, if they report that time, yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, that was just, that was, uh, you know, it was 4th of October that they came and spoke to you about the musicians, uh, and, you know, that wasn't the first case that is brought up in these papers. But then we're talking about two days later, the 6th of October, plus another visit, which was slightly earlier, on the 5th of October, um, it does seem like the same issue. I mean, this is consecutive days we're referring to. Um, it, they came again and again, but they probably didn't write a report. They were coming almost every night. But mm-hmm. this was a trio playing and it wasn't very loud. And uh, the door was shut and it wasn't really disturbing anyone. Up. But someone who wants to be disturbed and calls the council. So this is the case, yeah. So this will this will theater across the road, as I said, they were doing it there and it was I thought it was a good occasion to accommodate them and uh, serve the drinks and make some money. But I don't serve drinks after hours as it was alleged before. And uh, sometimes we I, I I can't bring myself to be a spoil sport and uh, you know stop it. Uh, it's a pub. It's where people come to let their hair down. It's not a cemetery. It, and if people want the quietness of a cemetery, they can go and move next to one. Mm. I, I appreciate that, but I think unfortunately it is sometimes the job of a license holder to be a spoil sport, and that, that's where some of the problems may may have arisen. Yeah. Um, uh, if we refer to people standing on the forecourt. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a number of references to it. 
But um, on the, if we take one, um, 24th of January, 2020, um, officers visited you just before midnight, and there were 10 people on the forecourt. Would you accept that that was a breach of your licensing conditions? No, because they weren't on the forecourt. This is, uh, I don't know if you, if you have a visual uh, uh, picture of the pub. Uh, the forecourt is almost open to, to, the, to the pavement. So, but when often people stand in the corner with platinum clay, waiting for taxi, ready to leave, and they, they probably meant they were standing there. It is the forecourt, it's like the front of the pub. Uh, it's not in the patio, it's the front of the pub. People call it the taxi and, uh, you know, leaving. So, mm. Not the party of the doors are locked and I move to the staff. Well, okay, if we take the 29th of December then, um, the officers say they attended at, um, they arrived at 22.53 and there were seven people seated in the outside gazebo area. So that must mean the, the covered area. Uh, I don't know why the gazebo is there because it's the side uh, that's owning, as they're called, on the south side of the building. Uh, sometimes people stand there to avoid the rain and the cold. It's a small one. It's not to the patio. It's on the other side. It's over the pavement and the trap doors of the pub. Sometimes people go under that shelter waiting for a taxi. So I don't know what they mean. There's no gazebo here. It's a big owning in the front of the patio. And then there's a small dots, as they call curve, only small one on the south side of the building. Mm. Well, I can, I mean, looking at the pictures, I can only imagine the outside gazebo area means um, the area under the awning in front of the pub. Um, I can't see what else it would I mean. There were people there. I locked this place at 10 30, uh, the latest. People move in uh, and the doors are locked. So I don't know what they mean. Okay. Try not to uh, let people, even if they're waiting for a taxi, I can go out and tell them to be quiet and, you know, not to disturb. We have signs all over to say disturb our neighbors and all that. It's mm -hmm. not that I neglect that duty of mine. Uh, but if people are looking for trouble, they can find trouble. So mm -hmm. they call the, the officers every time. This is the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. I mean, the only... Um, we can only go by the reports and the evidence given and, and you know, we saw your video and, um, and the music did seem, did seem to be very loud, but obviously that's the only time I've actually heard, heard the music, um, itself. Anyway, I think, I think that probably, I can probably leave it there and, uh, hand over to Councillor Spaulding if he wants to ask any questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Bennett. Councillor Spaulding. Uh, Chairman, um, four, four quick points. Um, Mr. Kosakis, um, I haven't met you before, but i um, very interested in your explanations and how you run your pub. Uh, can I ask you, um, since June 2018, uh, in the last couple of years, um, ha have you had any private parties that go on after midnight? Not really, no. Uh, it doesn't mean, as I said before, that I cannot hold a private function if I don't have a ten, a temporary event notice. We had very few parties since then. I can probably count it in one hand. And I don't need a ten to hold the party up till 12 o'clock. And 12.30 is drink up time. But often, as I was telling the last hearing, when you have a busy pub, uh, like after a party and that, uh, you've got to let people out slowly because it's like a crowd going out and obviously it's gonna make, they're gonna make noise on a quiet street. So I try to slow it down, the, the exit and the locking up. So that, that's the story of, of so, so the, I think you said you had about three a month, and um, no, I said I'd be sometimes lucky. they go on a bit after midnight when you're dispersing people. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, second question. <clears throat> Has, have you ever had any music at all ever um, that that is being played after 10 p.m.? Yes, I did. Yeah. Next question. Um, the very simple questions. Have you ever had any customers um, who might still be drinking up um, who sit outside after 10 p.m.? No, I I no. I avert them. I lock the doors. I move them in. Uh, I, I don't do that, but often, you know, if, if people sitting outside, if your window is open right next door, uh, it can be disturbing. So I try to ask them to keep quiet and that. And we, funny enough, this is the other thing the council did. They did not keep a record of the two asbos I reported. Buckets of water, packed of people who were dining twice that happened it, on the on the front patio. At nine o'clock, nine thirty. Why? So just to be clear, um, yeah. you've never had anybody sitting outside after ten p.m. No, no, not drinking. No. No. Okay. And then the last drinking. question. Said not um, drinking. Oh, this patio. Let me explain. This patio is open. Often the pub is shut, and people can walk in from the road with a tin of beer and sit there and drink it. And yeah. This is not punted, and I cannot police the patio after I close the pub. On your it, premises, yeah. Uh, it, and then finally, going to um, the, the pavement. My is last that, question yeah. is uh, about um, how you run your uh, family business um, in terms of cleaning. C can you just tell me what your cleaning regime is? Do you clean at night before you close, or do you clean first thing in the morning? No, I or clean. I clean up in the bar at night. And in the morning, yeah, is a is a is a schedule to keep it uh, clean and tidy. Yeah. Uh, and when is outside cleaned? In the morning. Because in the I, morning. I have in the morning because the outside area is uh, uh, how you say unguarded. They, they, you know, people come and uh, eat uh, dinner or you know the takeaways and chuck it out there. Uh, but the pub it doesn't open till midday the earliest so we open usually at two o'clock for, for, for business so this area outside the patio under the opening uh, is it can be used by anybody we had this before so uh, it's difficult for me to police it if someone decides to take the, the you know and sit there sometimes two of them drinking and talking so i cannot police that it's right i joined to the pavement and uh, people can walk into that and uh, the drink the beer after we uh, And then sometimes it might be as late as midday the next day before you're able to clear up any debris that's left there. Yeah, I clear up the, the glasses and everything, the big uh, rubbish, let's call it, uh, and leftovers as soon as I close. I clear the glass with about to And I pick all the glasses up and go. Close the patio. That's finito. There's nobody allowed that. So, but what I'm saying is, after hours, when I, the pub is shut, people can still go and sit on the benches and have a drink. So that doesn't mean it's my customers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kosovitz. Um, I, I think you know, for, as part of the council's question, I've got a question. Um, Aren't the benches supposed to be made unusable at night? Aren't they supposed to be put to one side or something, Mr. Kosakis? No, this is, uh, if we had a camera, I can show you. This is fixed on the, on the, on the floor. On the, Pardon? On the, the, the benches and the yeah. tent are mounted on the decking. So I oh, I see. Well, okay. I people see. Are, I'm going to put nails on them. I don't know. Is uh, it doesn't happen very often. Okay. Sometimes at night I can't find the thing, or I can hear them from upstairs, so I have to come down and shoot them out. Right. Before I uh, give part on the questions to Miss Lefebvre, I would just like to ask my own last question. Um, given various things that have been said in the past, uh, and that you have admitted license breaches in the past, and including today when uh, Mr. when Councillor Bennett was asking you particular questions about the very recent past, 
Um, given that at the 2018 review, every effort was made by the committee to not agree with the applicant. Remember, the applicant wanted to revoke the license and the committee decided against that. OK, it imposed some, con some extra conditions, but the point was to try and to, to not revoke the license. So my question to you is, what can you offer the committee? Same question. What can you offer the committee that it does not revoke the license? And I must add to that. Sorry, we. I know it's the same case. You have lots of complementary supporting letters, and you have a few uh, people who who have who get disturbed. But the issue is that disturbance um, notifications come from nearby, just like the video that was shown at the more than one video, I think, possibly, at the um, at the review hearing. So we have to take into account not just the complimentary letters from people who do live nearby, as we've heard from one of them, but we also know that a lot of them live quite a long way away. So And they don't visit at 1 a.m. They're there at, say, 9 p.m. or something. So what can you offer the committee that you should keep your license? Convince, how do you convince the committee to keep your license? That's the question I have. I don't know if I could convince, but all I can say is that I'll try to comply with the licensing law and the opening hours and the noise restrictions as best as I can. But often a pub becomes a target. So anything, any trouble, like uh, Mo earlier was talking about the spinning cars or people walking by, and it all assume is to do with the pub. But it's not always the pub. This pub is rather quiet overall. But it just so happened that the resident that moved next door decided that she doesn't like being next to that. So this is what has brought all this back up again. And this is, is driven from her, all this. So all I can promise to you is to comply with the rules and the licensing law, as I have tried in the past. And we're not uh, known for being disorder as uh, people calling it or crime and disorder as they are this is not the case here is this psychophantic we're talking about we're actually talking mostly about noise not about yeah. crime disorder that was past we talk about the present which is noise mostly and you yeah. did undertake last time round. you said much the same thing i think so it's got to be something concrete that says this time round you will not allow all that noise to emanate after your licensed hours. Okay, yeah, I can, I can promise that as best as I can. But often, you know, you know, the, it's a pub. So the patio, we try to control it as best as we can. And uh, we build this, uh, what do you call it, the ports for the noise uh, to, to, to make the best of a bad situation because I don't think any other, the next door neighbors on this side, they, they never had a problem. They, I talk to people, they call it that I'm intimidating them. They say all sorts, but it's not the case. I try to be a, a, a local uh, little uh, community part. Well, okay. So thank you very much. Uh, Chair, questions? can I just clarify? Yes. Uh, because you've asked um, Mr. Kostatis what he can offer. Can he confirm whether he is offering to comply with the conditions which were actually put on the license in 2018? Because there's some suggestion that he doesn't have to comply with them because he thinks he has an appeal. So I want Mr. Costatis to make it clear whether he's saying he's going to comply with all the conditions which were actually added to the license in September 2018. Mr. Okay, yeah, well, yes, okay, I, I might force to do that because, I mean, the, the appeal is still pending as far as I know. So, but if you think that is going to be useful, yes, I will uh, comply with the new restrictions of imposed on AT. Thank you very much, because I would add, this is very good, this is noted, recorded, because if it turns out that there, you know, there is an appeal which we're you know, trying to locate, and it, it has a decision, and then, of course, that will inform the council as to what it does. But for now, you do accept the extra conditions imposed on the 2018 review. Well, thank you very much. Well, that is helpful. So now, um, I guess it's Ms. Lefebvre's turn, finally, to ask some questions of Mr. Kotsakis. Up to five minutes, preferably less, as it's now half past two. 
Thank you very much, Chair. And in fact, you and your colleagues have asked most of the questions I would have asked in any case. May I start with a point of clarification? Uh, my understanding of the history of the uh, music uh, at this venue is that uh, from 2012, when the Live Music Act uh, of, of that year was uh, passed, uh, this premises was able um, to rely on the exemption so as to play live and amplified music until 11 p.m. That exemption was disapplied by virtue of the 2018 review decision. The reference to that for your note, sir, is at page 40 of our agenda papers. And so it was that from September 2018, uh, the licence hours, uh, uh, terminal hour for regulated entertainment, were 2,200 hours for both live uh, and recorded music. Uh, Mr Katsakis, with that background in mind, we know that you have had no temporary event notices for your premises since 2017, June. That's right, isn't it? Yes, it is right, because... It uh, here there's a little bit of that confusion again. The temporary event notice doesn't allow me to be loud. It only allows me to serve alcohol after my licensed hours. So that's it the, you. Of the 10. The 10 also, the temporary event notice, uh, the council told me that I wasn't going to get any anyway. But I didn't use it because, as I said, it doesn't help with the noise. If I was going to get a 10, it doesn't mean that I can block the music. It means no. it, that I can operate and serve alcohol after hours. That's it. Mr. Kotsakis, you need a temporary event notice to engage in any licensable activity that your premises license doesn't otherwise allow you to do. Uh, and so I'm going to ask you this question straight up. Do you accept that any live or uh, amplified music at Ariadne's after September 2012, sorry, 2018, was unlawful? No, because I told you, I was going back with the amendment you mentioned before of 11 o'clock, because I had appealed this restriction. So, and the time, it doesn't mean that I can uh, carry on playing loud. It means I can serve alcohol later, that's all. So let's keep things clear. Yes, let's keep things, Mr. Clear, Mr. Kotsakis. I've put to you a very clear and accurate uh, a, 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 a summary of licensing law. You need a temporary event notice to engage in any licensable activity, including the provision of regulated entertainment, that your license doesn't permit you to engage in. Do you accept that that's right or not? We go around in circles. Yeah, it is right. But as I said to you, yeah, of course, yeah. If you're going to operate later than your permitted hours, you need the tent. But the tent yep. doesn't cover the noise. The noise still regulated by the 10.30 peace hours, the hours of peace. So this is what I'm saying to you. I don't need to, to get a tent if I operate. Mr. Kotakis, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but I, I think... Uh, I wouldn't argue that point because Mr. Fevre is a is a lawyer and a barrister in his field. Yeah. And I know from my own experience, because, you know, this is not the first um, licensing hearing I'm doing, and I have attended 10, 10 hearings. You need, a, please listen to what Mr. Fevre said. You need a 10 for anything that, for any activity that's not covered by your license. Any license, as she said, any licensable activity that is not covered by your license. Therefore, live and recorded music, you have a terminal hour. If you want to exceed that terminal hour, you need a 10. I mean, it's as simple as that, a temporary event notice. I, I don't know how much simpler one can put it. I wouldn't right. argue with an expert, not with me. I mean, I'm not an expert in this, but I wouldn't argue with a lawyer in the field. <laughs> he does it every day. So. Yeah, well, I mean, whether he does it every day or not, my point is also clear. The 10, because they try to accuse me that I run parties without a 10. Uh, the 10 only again covers the sale of alcohol. It doesn't mean you can Mr. go. Sorry, Mr. Kotsakis, I, I really can't. We can't go around and around. Yeah. As part yeah. of the yeah. arrangement for us to not revoke the license, will you accept the fact you said you will accept 
yeah. the, ter- the conditions and the condition the conditions are absolutely clear and you cannot take the law into your own hands so please will you accept the fact that you need to attend if you wish to play music after your licensed normal licensed hours i do accept but what i'm saying to you sir is that if someone complains whether i have a 10 or not about loudness about disturbance, the ten, the temporary event notice does not cover me for noise. It only covers me for any, you know, sale of alcohol and that. If it's noisy, that ten means nothing. It doesn't mean I have a license to be loud. Mr. Chair, Favre? Chair, Chair, can I just clarify? Sorry, it's Heidi Tickham. Yeah. Mr. Kostakis, when you apply for a ten, you could apply for the sale of alcohol, you could apply to extend the hours for live music or recorded music. Tens do cover other licensable activities. What tens don't allow you to do it is to undermine the prevention of public nuisance licensing objective. But technically, you can apply for permissions for music under a ten. Yeah, yeah. As long as you don't disturb people. But people can say, oh, it's disturbing, like the same old story, and they <coughs> give you another fine. Yeah, I, okay, I'll, I'll start trying to get a chance if they if happy to do me, if I get any part. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you very much. So that's clear now. Ms. Lefebvre, are you done with the questions? Thank you. I'm almost done, sir. I think that okay, was one have question. Another one. <laughs> thank on, you then. very Off much. You go. Mr. Katsakis, the only reason I'm asking you a question like that is so the committee can understand how well you do or don't don't understand your obligations under licensing law. Can I ask you one or two questions? uh, And this is just my last topic, sir, because I know time is short now. The 4th of October 2019, for all our notes, uh, the uh, Mr. Labar's evidence is at page 25 of our papers. This is the night where we've got the video evidence and the saxophone as part of the trio. Uh, And this is where we have officer evidence to the effect that they attended at 2340 hours uh, and and saw the music uh, uh, as described and saw and heard screaming in the front porch area. Mr. Kotsakis, you were asked about that evening in your interview under caution which took place on the 7th of November 2019. That's the additional material that you read this morning. At page six of that interview, you explained that the reason that those musicians were playing uh, at that time in that way uh, was because they just picked up their instruments and they had a bit of a play. In answer to Councillor Bennett's questions, you said, in fact, they did that for a few nights, play a little set. Yep. Is that the action of a responsible licensee or an irresponsible licensee? Well, I'll leave you to judge it, but this uh, event of the live jazz here was impromptu. So I, they just turned up from across the road and I didn't have time to go and get a tent. You know, it wasn't planned. It wasn't a private function, that it, it was planned ahead. So they turn up with their instrument, and I happen to know one of them, and they were drinking before the show, and then they were coming after the show. So I'm trying to clarify the loudness and the actual essence of all this, the disturbance, the nuisance of the abate. So this is what I'm concentrating. So I'm not going to go to the letter of the rule. It's the essence of the rule and the spirit of the rule I'm more interested in. So I don't want to disturb people. And at the same time, I'm offering entertainment and a, a, and a sing-along. And it doesn't happen every night. Mr. Kotakis, can I just say, uh, we are here about the law. It's not up to uh, yourself or maybe you know me or anybody to, to interpret as, as one wishes. Um, also, you have, do you not have the option of you know musicians walking in for a drink after whatever they were doing and then wanting to play something you say well look gentlemen it's half or ladies and gentlemen it's half past 11 or 12 o'clock and it's a bit too late to um to uh, to to play i mean that isn't that what a, a license holder does sometimes regrettably may have to do however 
thoughts had that may seem at the time. I agree with you, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. By the way, could I say um, to all parties, all parties here, this is live stream, but it's also recorded. So you can always go back to the uh, recording and uh, governance will be able to advise us. I mean, it'll be on YouTube, I think, but governance can advise us when it's available. So if anyone wants, wants to check who said what, it's available. It will be available. It's not available right now. I mean, obviously, it's available online. People are listening. I don't know who's listening on YouTube. But, um, you know, you can review what was said. So I just want everybody to bear that in mind. Um, Ms. Lefebvre, have you finished your questioning? Um, I, I have. Thank you very much. Um, I think I can ask Ashley Wilson. To, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, legal, do you have any questions? Legal? Ashley Wilson, no questions. Would no questions, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And legal, is that Ms. Titcombe? Ms. Johnson, don't forget Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson, Johnson. sorry, Ms. Johnson. Yeah, what am I talking about? Yeah, Ms. Johnson. She is there, Chair, but I'm not sure if she's on mute at the moment. Looks like she's on mute. Okay. So perhaps she doesn't have any questions. Sorry, I do oh, have a question. Go. Sorry, I muted and mute myself and then I muted myself. OK, um, I do have a couple of questions. I won't be too long. Um, we've heard today about complaints being received after the second review. Um, Mr. Kotsakis, would you say that your premises is being run properly or not? I will say, yeah, well, if you don't protect your house, you're going to fall on your head, we say. Uh, I think so, yeah. According to the majority of people that live in the area and use the place, and that's how it's provided. I think it runs rather well. And uh, uh, the noise, in a way, is almost inevitable. I will try, as we said before, to control it and uh, eliminate any spillage of noise. That's why the old ports outside and even the, the shelter, as we will all call it, stopping the noise traveling that way, north, where is the complaint come from. Uh, and now they wanted to take it down. I mean, uh, it's, it's very difficult to survive running a club in a, on a, in a quiet street that, uh, you know, that the, the, the next door person wants to close down. Okay, right, thank you. Um, Is that it? I have one more, Another sorry, question? sir. Yeah, okay. um, you've mentioned, Mr. Kotsakis, that um, you put in an appeal, and I won't touch too much, but you put in an appeal, and as such, you thought you could play music up to 11 o'clock. But if you look in Mr. Labar's submission, there's plenty of occasions where music was being played after 11 o'clock. Um, what would you say to that? Yes, it was played at 11 o'clock, and you can say it was my breed. It was your breach of uh, of the rules. Okay, so you don't deny that music was being played after eleven when officers that visited. Alone, that alone, it, on its own, it's because you can play music in your house and put the telly on. It doesn't mean it's nuisance necessarily. That's what I'm trying to clarify. And this is what is the essence of the law. This is why they put restrictions in the hours comply with the peace hours and not disturb the, the neighbors. <coughs> but I am a target. If you're a house and you play loud music, they can take your license away and prosecute you. Uh, but I've been subjected to that. Okay, but there were customers on your premises at that time listening to the music and enjoying it. That's a licensable activity. So it's not just about nuisance. It's about providing a licensable activity when you're not authorized to do so. Yeah, it's a crime. Do you agree? I agree, yeah. And you consider that a crime? To well, well, breaches of conditions and operating otherwise than in accordance with a premises license is a criminal offence. You know, you could receive right. an unlimited fine or imprisonment up to six months. So it is a crime, yes. Uh, I have no further questions, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kostakis, do you understand now the significance and the importance of licensed conditions 
one has to stick to them. There's no uh, there's no judgment about it. What's the spirit and the letter? There's a law, and that has to be complied with. And that's what licensing does. Uh, that's what the licensing act is. It gives you a legal fixed framework within which to work. And okay. it's important for us as a committee to understand to understand that you understand that. And I have the impression so far it wasn't so clear because you are just like you asked us now, is that a crime? You have customers there an hour after you weren't supposed to. I'm listening to music uh, an hour after you were not supposed to. And you've admitted it was a breach of the conditions. So yeah. is it now clear um, that what what your obligations are? Yep. Yeah, it is clear. Is it clear now? Absolutely Sorry. clear. So that you, you yeah. But you see, I'm trying to focus not on the whole of the licensing law, but on the point of noise and nuisance. And this is yeah, what you I weren't supposed to have musicians there after the admit permitted hour. So whether there was noise or not, it, it is also a breach of the licensing condition. I just want to make it clear for our own benefit as a committee before we break, because I'm going to try and after calling yeah. Mr. Larkins, I mean, we've got to actually finish in about 10 minutes or thereabouts, even though. So I'm trying to bring this to a, an, amic an amicable and satisfactory close so the committee has a basis. Remember, I asked you earlier, Mr. Kotsakis, what you can do to convince the committee to not revoke the license. And one of the things was, the key thing was that the conditions imposed or, or agreed, actually, it's agreed, as, as was pointed out correctly, the agreed conditions of 20, 2018, you would actually comply with. Now, do you understand that the main thing is also you have to comply with the actual licensing conditions, all of them? All the licensing conditions that includes no music after a certain hour, anywhere, regardless of there's noise or not. And that's I think the point Ms. Johnson was making. So is this clear? I'm I'm trying to help you actually. Yes, I know. Thank you. Uh, it is clear, and I try to be uh, very precise with the times and the rules of uh, engagement with the licensing law. Yeah. Sorry, okay. but yeah. Okay. So if that's clear, then we have something. To go forward on. So um, I think that completes the questions for Mr. Kotsakis. Well, it's got a little time. I was going to call a little break, but let's know. Let's go to the end. I think we have only one more uh, speaker, Mr. Larkins. Would you like to make your presentation? It does say up to 15 minutes, but I think we really should finish off in less than that. Uh, well, I shall. Um, hang on. If we can. I mean, I know you have a right to do so, but I think one of the it's a question of who can be where and what and when. So, if it's possible. okay, I, I will try and be very brief, and mm -hmm. I, I can exactly see your um, your problems. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. To say the least, we are here longer than eat, expected. Dude. We all need to eat lunch at some stage. Um, so, are you going to continue <laughs> after me today, or are you yes. going to adjourn for another? No, occasion? we're going to try and wrap it up. Yeah, Mr. Chariton appears to have left, so you're the last. A speaker, so we'd like you to okay. speak if that's okay. Well, with you. Just trying to yes. reassemble this because un, the breaking it up now would have mean having to reassemble everybody, exactly the same people, and that's going to be very difficult. Okay. Um, yeah. So my worry about this is that Mr. Kostaki's um, submission paints a rather alarming picture of um, mischief and harassment. Um, that people are attempting to damage his business. Um, the excited and lurid tones of some of the complaints seem to be negated by um, the evidence of Nick Shirley, for example. I don't recognize that kind of um, violence and threatening behavior as being part of the community that I live in. It's it's really rather stretching the imagination to think that it, 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 it's, it's accountable. Um, the other worry I have about this is spending public money um, on pursuing what's basically a neighbour dispute. And also placing too much um, credence on the evidence of officers. And I would refer you to the Carabino um, case, which is exactly to do with noise. Um, and that was withdrawn after um, objection from the Carabino family. Now, how much public money is spent on 
um, pursuing these cases when on the advice of the officers when in fact they can be so easily overturned. Um, the other factor that I think is also very important that the 2012 legislation um, as Mr. Kostakis has pointed out, um, allows for um, complainants to be described as vexatious. Much in the same way as criminal law, you have um, vexatious litigants. And so I think consideration should be uh, given to trying to determine whether some of these complainants are vexatious. Um, and presumably the, the, the whole thing is not going to be wrapped up today, but will be discussed at a further date. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think, um, as I, I also said uh, more than once, I think, in this proceedings that, I mean, we are focusing also on the officers', um, officers uh, evidence, and I'm not sure that they have any reason to, to be to have submit vexatious evidence. I mean, you know, that's, that's not what I said. I said that the officers can sometimes be in error and their judgment is okay. in error. No, no. OK, fair enough. But I mean, OK, fair enough. But in general, you, you were referring and you're not the first only one to refer to you know, that some of the objections may be vexatious. That's what I want to say. That, I'm talking to the uh, We're not entering into all the objections. We're entering. Pardon? Say it again. Sorry. I, I was referring to the complainants being vexatious. Okay, right. Uh, any questions from the members? No questions. Councillor Spalding, no questions. Mr. Uh, uh, Councillor Bennett. Nothing else from me, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Um, no. Okay, nothing Mr. Fevre, any questions? Nothing from me, thank you, Chair. And um, Ms. Johnson? No questions from me. Right. Well, amazingly, I think that brings us. Oh, do, oh just in case, do the licensing officers have anything to add? Three minutes, two minutes. <laughs> Mr. Phelan, Sharon, Mrs. Dyball. Nothing further from me, Chair. Right. Well, thank you very much. We have reached the end of a very long meeting, exceptionally long meeting, and I thank everybody for their forbearance and, and patience. The committee thank now you, has... Chairman. Been... Very well chaired. Thank you very much. <laughs> so that's very kind of you. Thank you. The committee now has all the information needed, and we will retire to make our decision in private session. Uh, because of the circumstances and so on, we will not, and I mean that's because of, you know, online meetings and COVID-19 restrictions, we will not announce the decision today. A summary decision will be sent to the parties within five working days of today's hearing. And a full decision will follow as soon as possible thereafter. Thank you all for the meeting. The hearing has now closed and the live stream will end.